Honorable Megito, present. Honorable uh, Gisela Opperman, present. Uh, Honorable Kleza, present. Honorable mm. Hadewe, present. Honorable Mkali Pizie. Uh, Honorable Hanif Hendrix is here. Honorable Hurnevald uh, is here. And Honorable Yees. These are the honorable members that I've seen present. To appreciate the presence of Deputy Minister Papela, I see your presence um, with the senior management team of the department. I can see you are here in numbers, uh, including uh, the CEO of MISA, DDG Tau, I can see you are here. Uh, Kevin Naidu, I can see you are here. Mm, who else? Uh, yes, those are the key people I'm seeing there. Yeah? Then also to welcome the executive mayor with his team. I think as and when the executive mayor takes the platform, he will then be able to tell us with whom is he uh, coming with today to this meeting. Colleagues will recall this is a follow-up meeting based on our interaction with the city of Cape Town. Um, it was on the 4th, eh? if not the 3rd of July. And then there are matters that we we, we raised this, and then the mayor committed to also come and share with us uh, the human settlement uh, plan for the city. So it's a meeting that uh, he said he's going to do that and any other matters that you will feel that the, if they need to be brought to the attention of the committee, a uh, way need be, it's not about accounting where the executive mayor and the city would like our intervention as a portfolio committee to then assist them in executing their responsibilities. And I will then hand over to you, executive mayor, and we'll introduce the city colleagues that you brought them along, and then we'll then do the presentation. We want to appreciate that you have sent us their pre presentation on time, the members have gone through the presentation, then it will be just for you to highlight the issues that you feel the committee needs to take cognizance of. Then from there, I will allow the colleagues to interact with the presentation. I must say I've got only two apologies. The apology of the minister who's held up in some of the, 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 the department engagements also honorable okay. okay. mute your mic executive mayor we are hearing your other conversation from the other side so and also honorable Hussein. those are the two apologies that i have but yes it may be then can i repeat again to the colleagues you see what i've done to the mayor yesterday i was too harsh to some people who were disrupting our meetings you don't mute your mic when you are give, not given an opportunity to speak. You know I'm going to send you out of this meeting. I've done that yesterday. I felt I was so harsh, but the disruptions were so imminent. Make sure you remember, colleagues, to mute your mics. We only hear you as and when you are given an opportunity to speak. Some of you bring children along to meetings. Can we respect the decorum of the house? It's a meeting as if you were sitting in the House in Parliament, so make sure that there are no disruptions around you. If you want to do that, you switch off your video and mute your mic. Like when you want to go to the bathroom, grab a cup of coffee, you must always, we shouldn't see what's happening behind you. Secondly, colleagues, can I plead with all of you today, you. you are live on Parliament TV. So it will be advisable that you always put your video on as and when you are given an opportunity to speak. So without wasting time, let me then hand over 
today, Executive Mayor of Cape Town, the city of Cape Town, to introduce the team he has brought along and also then introduce the presentation to us. Over to you, Executive Mayor. Unmute your mic, Executive Mayor. And mute your mic. Thank you, Chair. Your mic it's is done. on mute. It's done. Okay. Thank you. Honorable thank Chairperson, you. to you and the honorable members, once again, thank you very much for this opportunity. We welcome the opportunity, also the presence of the Deputy Minister. I think it is important that the city of Cape Town and um, the committee continue to engage. Um, for the committee to always to understand what the city are doing, where the city are coming from, also to take advice uh, from where you are sitting, how you see things, and um, I respect um, um, the time from time to time to explain the city of Cape Town's position. I, I believe communication and good communication is always a good thing. Um, I just want to say I have Councillor Malusi Bue with me, uh, the MMC for Human Settlements in the City of Cape Town and uh, Director Ray Rugaba. Um, um, I'm glad to hear you did receive our presentation and from our side Ray Rugaba will lead with the, with the presentation and I will stay whole evening long and uh, if there's any questions I need to answer, I will do so. Um, just some uh, remarks from my side is uh, we will give you ne the necessary insight regarding the city of Cape Town's housing projects. What is our output, our delivery, uh, insight regarding our budget for, for housing, and uh, also insight with regard to our bu the budget cuts and uh, its impact on housing delivery. Uh, also, the issue, the standing with our grants we receive from government for delivery and, uh, and, and so forth. And uh, I just want to say to you, Chair, before I hand over to Ray Rugabab, despite uh, the above, despite budget cuts, I believe there's good progress in the city of Cape Town with regard to housing delivery on all fronts, uh, despite uh, the odds. On that note, um, with your green light, Chair, may I hand over to, to Ray Rugaba. Over to him. Over, yes. Ch Thank you, Mr. To, sorry, my, my Chairperson. Is the presentation to, going to be flighted here? Yeah, just to note the apology of the DG of uh, DCOC, if that could be also added to the apologies. The apology of who? DG uh, Decock, Avril Williams. But, but DM, you really have to talk about this. She knows what to do. I didn't she get has the written a letter to you, Chair, and I've just re also received the letter as a copy. Is it being sent to me now? Well, I just sent it to you, but I, he said he had already <laughs> sent it to you. And so I wanted an evidence, no, I so I'm just giving you whether you did receive it. I didn't aid. get that. Oh, okay, fine. Unless if it's sent to you, it's sent to you now, ne? and then it's sent to me at the same time. I mm. checked the apologies prior to this meeting. There was no apology. That's how oh. I was able to talk about the apology of the minister. Okay. I got it. Okay. You hear? Sure. All right, thank, thank you. you. My apology for disrupting. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> uh, my apology, Mayor, Executive Mayor. <laughs> Can you, the presenter, proceed, please? We apologize ne, for what has just happened between myself and the DM. Uh, good evening, Chair. Uh, good evening, Deputy Minister, members, Mayor Plato, councillors, and colleagues. My colleague, Rihanna Pretorius, will be flighting the presentation. Um, I'll be covering the introduction and certain aspects of the presentation, and Rihanna Pretorius will also join in with, uh, to cover the informal settlements component of the presentation. Uh, the Human Settlements Program within the City of Cape Town is 
undertaken by three departments within the Human Settlements Directorate. Uh, that's the formal housing development component, which is 100% grant funded from the USDG and the HSDG. Uh, and that department is con responsible for the construction of new housing through the BNG program, uh, new CRUs, management of the PHP programs, and social housing. Then our public housing department, which is 100% city funded, uh, looks after all of the rental stock that the city owns across the city and it's responsible for maintenance and upgrades, as well as management of the tenancy uh, of those units. And thirdly, our informal settlements upgrading component, uh, which is also 100% grant funded from the USDG and the UISPG grants, uh, are, is responsible for the upgrading of informal settlements but also responsible for the provision of human humanitarian relief when there's fires and floods, uh, especially like we've seen over the last week. So moving on to the formal housing department, I'll start with the budget for the current financial year for projects under construction. Um, based on our USDG allocation, as well as the HSDG allocation from the Provincial Department of Human Settlements. Um, these are the projects that the, the city will be undertaking. There are 13 projects where the construction of services are in progress and funded in this financial year. Uh, then in addition to that, there's the Imizamo Yeto project in Hout Bay where infrastructure is being constructed. And through the HSDG, we'll be undertaking the construction of the top structures. Um, as you see, funding allocated per project on the slide. Now, this slide was done uh, based on the May 2020 budget approval. But since then, we have heard that there have been further cuts on the HSDG from national to province. And those cuts then impact on the city as well as the other municipalities uh, within the province. The next slide is just a pick of our Marula South project, which is currently under construction. And there's just under 600 urban that are being constructed in the first phase. Um, there's an, another thousand units uh, sites to be developed there. Currently, we are busy in Delft, The Hague as well, with top structures, and this is just one example of the top structures that we are currently constructing. Uh, in respect of projects that are out and to, are ready for tender, we've set aside 83 million for new construction commencing um, almost immediately because these tenders are ready for uh, these projects are ready for tender. Um, so it's the Marula North, which is the sister project to the Marula South project, where there's uh, almost 1,700 urban to be developed. And AXA Symphony is a project that we are doing in, co in conjunction with AXA, where AXA wants to realign their runway, and the city is developing a site to accommodate families that are currently living uh, in the course of the runway uh, or in the flight path, and we need to remove those families to safer housing uh, before AXA can commence fly flying out on that new path. So there's about 3,000 families that need to be moved to the AXA Symphony Way development. And the third project is Salaris Pass Village in Somerset West, uh, which is um, very close to the N2, uh, leaving Cape Town. Um, then we have at the moment uh, 25 projects which are in the planning stage. Some of these will go out to construction later this financial year. Uh, projects um, like Highlands Drive and Mitchell's Plain, uh, as well as the Mahama project in Kailicha. Uh, so there's another 133 million that's been set aside for planning, design, 
and the start of construction on some of these projects in the current financial year. They will have impacts on the city's budget over the following financial years as well. So there's 200 million set aside for these projects in the next financial year and a further 212 million in the 22-23 financial year. At that time, some of them will also be under construction with top structures. The next slide is just to show you how uh, we are looking at developing infill sites within established areas. And Bella is one example where we've identified all of the city-owned vacant sites within the Bella area. Uh, we've assessed their potential for development uh, in respect of human settlements or other uh, municipal facilities. And we are now getting them ready for, or the ones that have been selected for human settlements are now getting ready with planning and design so we can go out to tender to construct services on those sites. We're doing the same thing in the greater Athlone area where there are very few city-owned pieces of land still available, but we are undertaking a similar exercise so we balance the human settlement development in terms of housing with other municipal services that may be required or municipal facilities that may be required so that we can make good use and integrated use of these last remaining sites within the Athlone area. Um, we are also responsible for social housing and the community residential units. So at the moment there are five projects under social housing in the greater Woodstock area, Salt River, as well as Paro which will help to integrate those communities uh, with uh, social housing facilities. Um, these are currently in the planning stages and uh, except for the new market site, which is fairly well advanced uh, with developments uh, and design. And uh, we undertake these in conjunction with the uh, social housing regulatory authority uh, as well as with our social housing institutions that are accredited by the SHRA. In respect of the CRUs, we are focusing on the 11,000 odd hostel beds that we have across the city. And we have, we have started with Langa, Guguleta and Nyanga to look at upgrading those hostels or actually demolishing and reconstructing those hostels in so that we can provide family units rather than single man hostels that currently exist. This program is at risk because the National Department hasn't budgeted for uh, the construction of new CRUs through the HSDG. It's intended to be funded through the SHRA, but uh, we are still waiting for confirmation of the funding source. Uh, even though in Langa, we are ready to go out to tender uh, on some of these developments that we've started a few years back. And this is just an example of the social housing we do. Uh, this is the Glenhaven Social Housing Project, uh, which has recently become ready for occupation. And we've been, with the social housing partner, we've been allocating and signing up tenants to this facility. It's one of the newest and it's uh, um, fairly well designed and we're waiting to see how well it operates uh, so that we can follow the example of this on other social housing projects within the city. Um, then from the USDG, uh, the city also funds projects being undertaken by the Provincial Department of Human Settlements. Currently, there are 11 projects that the province is busy with within the city of Cape Town. For this financial year, we've set aside 123 million towards the provincial projects. In the past four to five years, we have funded an amount of about 800 million uh, on projects that the province is undertaking. 
The last three projects on this list, Dunoon, Itemba, and Kosovo, are projects that have been identified by the Provincial Department of Human Settlements to help with de-densification in Dunoon, in Kailicha, and in Kosovo uh, in a response to the COVID-19 outbreak. So these three projects, as well as others that the city has identified in Kailicha, are regarded as the COVID-19 projects that we are looking to accelerate to assist with the de-densification of the overcrowded areas. Then, as we came up to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the National Department had to reduce its allocation to provinces and divert that funding to informal settlements across the country. And that had an effect on the, uh, the city's USDG allocation. Um, so since our May 2020 budget that was approved by Council, we've had a further cut of 84 million uh, just on the human settlements allocation of the USDG. And that's brought our 2020-2021 USDG allocation down by 84 million. And just these 10 projects have seen a re reduction from 206 million to 122 million. We've managed to keep the current projects that are under construction going by starting to hold back some of the new projects so that the funding could be allowed to flow to the projects under construction and not be hampered by the cuts on the budget. But this will definitely have an effect on the delivery of the, the pace of delivery of these projects because it means they will get del delivered later than we had in anticipated. <coughs> Uh, just in, in, as an example of our reductions in the grants, the, especially the USDG and HSDG, we had started off last year with an indicative amount of 536 million <clears throat> as the human settlements allocation on the USDG. That was dropped slightly in January to 539. In May, it was dropped by a further 115,000 to 424 million. Um, the approved budget was based on 540 million, but we've had a further cut of 84 million. So we, we've been, we're now sitting uh, with a USDG allocation of 456 million. And in respect of the HSDG, which is used for the top structure construction, uh, our original budget, uh, oh, sorry, our original allocation as uh, indicated by province in August last year was 611 million. In January, we heard it was dropped to 500 million. Uh, later in January, it was dropped again to 336 million. And the figure eventually gazetted in March was 266 million. Since then, we've heard of a further cut of 40 million, which took it down to 226 million. And last week, we were approached by province to look at reducing by a further 53 million, which uh, we haven't received confirmation of, but it could mean that we would be down to 173 million, uh, which would only allow us to build in the region of about 1,600 houses in the current financial year. Uh, in respect of our non-financial targets, uh, these targets were set based on the original budgets that were indicated, and we anticipated 2,103 service sites being delivered in the current financial year, and 3,356 top structures. But with the recent cuts, uh, the top structures will be substantially affected. Uh, we are still aiming to deliver the service sites based on uh, moving funding to those projects that are able to deliver 
and holding back on new projects that haven't yet started. So we once we have final confirmation from province of the uh, reduced HSDG uh, allocation, we'll, we'll have to adjust our top structures, uh, top structure targets accordingly. Uh, in respect of our public housing uh, department, which is funded by the city, um, we've listed the various uh, activities and programs that are being undertaken in respect of maintenance and upgrading. Uh, some of them are smaller programs, but if you look at the replacement or upgrading of the electrical circuits, uh, circuits within the rental stock, we are spending just over 20 million a year for the next few years in rewiring many of the uh, existing rental units and improving the switches and all of the electrical infrastructure within those units because some of them are fairly old and outdated. We also have on most of our rental units steel window frames which are starting to show age and wear especially being along the coast. And there's almost 20 million a year being set aside for the window replacement program uh, across many of the developments. Um, then we also have a program where we are replacing old roofs, uh, especially if they've deteriorated from the original heating material that was used and we are upgrading that to more modern materials and we spend uh, around 30 million a year on these programs. Uh, the rest are smaller programs that are being undertaken, but uh, in total we'll be spending 144 million this year on maintenance and upgrading uh, of the rental stock. Next we move on to, uh, sorry, the, uh, these are just examples of the replacements of the roof sheets that we're doing. And then the next is the windows that we have to replace because of their condition. And thirdly, the plumbing within the units as well have had to be replaced because when these units were originally built, the plumbing stacks were built within the units running from one bathroom to the next, from one floor to the next. And that's led to problems when there have been sewer blockages. So we're currently undertaking an exercise to move all of these sewer stacks outside of the building uh, to prevent any uh, overflows when there's blockages, but also to make sure that these new stacks are newer materials and able to cope with the, with the flows within those units. Uh, my colleague Rihanna Pretorius will now talk to the UISPG funding program. I just need to unmute. Thank you very much. Good evening, um, uh, Chairperson, uh, Honourable Members and the Mayor and everybody else. Um, UISPG program, it deals with the upgrading of and the in-situ upgrading of our informal settlements in the city. Um, Maybe just to, before I get into the various technicalities, just to give you extent of our areas of informality, which we would like to refer to. We've got over 400, well, we've got 464 traditional informal settlements that we need to um, find a solution for in the city. Now, in the city or within the grant funding um, envelope that uh, Ray has uh, explained to us is a very limited envelope that we can do in terms of upgrading. So that's the one thing is the funding that we are uh, receiving from national government and then the different programs that is suitable for that specific informal settlement. As you all would know, each and every informal settlement is very unique and it's got its own set of physical conditions or constraints and community dynamics. So to have a standard rollout program from one informal settlement to another informal settlement is not feasible and we've learned over time you have to customize your response to that individual informal settlement. So the typical products that we deliver from informal settlement program 
is what we call a temporary relocation area or incremental development area. The UISP, this is the National Housing Program in terms of Chapter 3 of the Housing Code. It's the in-situ upgrading of the informal settlements. Uh, but this program and the grant funding received from National do not allow us to build any top structures. It's just uh, end product as a service site. Then as a city, we've got two programs, the reblocking and enhanced reblocking. This is a very much a community uh, driven approach. It's got to have the 100% buy-in of our communities. Um, and I'll explain why it's so important. And then the super block process is what we're doing for our extensive uh, settlements. Um, stakeholder engagement is fundamental for any informal settlement upgrading. If you cannot communicate right from the idea of upgrading through the planning process, through the procurement process, throughout the consultation process, and even afterwards when the people, uh, the beneficiaries have to move to the sites, that requires intensive and continuous consultations. And I'm not going to read to you what is all said there, but it is it is the key to any successful upgrading project is the consultation and stakeholding um, management of a project. Just to show you visually what we mean with a temporary relocation area, it's usually project linked. So we do usually create a TRA when we have to work in a settlement and have to move people temporarily out of the area in order to have working space. The IDA settlement is where we move people, but there's no real intention of moving them back into that informal settlement because that space that they've occupied there is now most likely utilized for a road. Or we have to put, create IDAs for people that they find themselves in emergencies. In situ upgrading, UISP, this is just a little storyboard to tell you how it works in reality. This is a settlement, you can see it's fairly, it's already de-densified, where we've already extracted all the qualifier beneficiaries out of the settlement to a BNG uh, housing project in the city. And what remained behind, what you see here, is your unqualifiers, or the non-qualifiers in terms of the housing code. So they would either have not the right income levels, or the age, or have previously benefited, or whatever the criteria may be that they do not qualify. We've then developed and get land use planning approval for a layout over the site. And because we had nowhere else to move the people, we had to do in situ upgrading and work around the people. And we then installed service sites as per the settlement year. So every site then received a, a so hard surface road, electricity, water, and sanitation point. But as per the funding program, this is where this part of the program ends the UISP. The next phase, what should happen then for the further upgrading of the settlement is, is that the people can then apply for a PHP program, a people's housing project, where they be then as a portable co-op and then start developing with grant assistance their top structures. And these are typical areas of other in situ upgrading. We, we've already done the, this is Coxton Fontaine, where it was over 700 uh, urban created there. And once again, we had to work in a rollover fashion to move the people onto the service sites. And this one was Mufalini Extension 2, where we had to extract people from uh, beneficiaries from out of backyard situation, hide density in overcrowd areas, people at higher risk. Um, so that the source area for this project is wider than just a specific one settlement. When we talk about reblocking the other product, um, you've most likely all been, or if not, we can take you to Flamingo Heights. Uh, before we started, it was one settlement, but there was sufficient space to do a reorganization or repositioning of the structures. And with the help of an NGO, and the community's 101% cooperation, the city managed to reposition them and create individual structures with hard surfaces. Each one received its own uh, water and sanitation point. They were electrified. And ultimately, they also received their own postal address. So that is what we create in terms of repositioning or reblocking a settlement. Uh, we've also piloted with the NGO in Kailicha. The enhanced reblocking, where we look at the double story arrangement, testing the issue around 
creating firewalls in between structures because we all know that informal settlements is very um, very flammable and we find a lot of uh, fires in our informal settlements. What we found with this reblocking project in Kalicha, it is quite a uh, novel, it's quite an um, interesting project for people who would not normally qualify for a BNG opportunity, but we've also learned some lessons that it's not necessarily a faster program, and there's quite a bit of uh, administrative um, issues that you have to deal with, but it is still a scenario that we are looking at as one of our housing options. Then on this, the super block area, we've got this settlement, we've got quite a big uh, a few big settlements in our uh, city. Uh, we've got Sweet Homes here, that's more than 4,000 structures. There's other settlements like Incanini of 11,000, Monmabisi of about almost 8,000, and so the list go on. So when you do a traditional in situ upgrading of these vast settlements, the time that it takes to reach and create everybody's individual site is multiple years. We're talking about easily seven to nine years. But by introducing a first access and a grid um, design or infrastructure, you, we can, the city can bring proper infrastructure to more people faster. We can create proper access ways. We can reticulate the settlement, bring in all the water and sanitation and necessary services, and then over time further upgrade the individual blocks. So this was the beginning of Sweet Homes. You can see it was quite a... There was no logic in the settlement, and it's quite a dense settlement. So we started to de-relocate some people out of our future roads out. And here you can see we've installed the, the main networks. The area is now fully hard surface, road, and reticulated. And the people that had to be relocated, the city then accommodated in our alternative IDA structures. So this is when we talk super blocking is to bring in immediate services to our residents and having better access. Um, in terms of our UISPG programs for the next three financial years, the first two projects is our collaboration with the Provincial Housing Program. Uh, we've got the Southern Corridor Program. And the first one is dealing with Guguletu, an airport precinct. And we've uh, in the first year, we've made 10 million available and the next two financial year you can see significant money of 122 and 193 million respectively. Uh, these budgets will have to be taken under review as in when we've got final confirmation of our future year's um, DORA allocations. As well with this Kosovo project, you can see significant budgets in the outer years. Then we've got in situ upgrading in various projects like Deep Freeze, uh, BM Section, uh, Incanini. And our overall budget after a 19 million rand reduction that we also had to absorb is now standing at 103 million for the next financial or the current financial year. It's about two weeks old. Um, and we've got all of them are under construction on this page. Then we've got another program. Uh, it's the Backyarder program where we provide a precast uh, toilet and tap with a hand basin to our backyard dwellers on city rental units. Uh, quite a few of our city rental uh, stock have uh, multiple backyarders on it. So we then roll out this uh, backyarder program with a water management device. And that program is about 22 million um, allocated for this financial year. For projects and planning phase at this point in time, uh, you can see we're doing looking at the village heights. It's quite an important area retreat for us to look at. Uh, Mfuleni, Kalbaskro, and Kanini South. It is uh, uh, additional TRA and IDA in support of the greater Inkanini that we have uh, already committed to work in. So this is the rollover site that we're preparing. And in this VT section, various other projects. Um, I'm going to hand over to Ray to continue on the COVID-19 detensification projects. Uh, Chair, I mentioned earlier that there were some projects being undertaken by province and the city uh, to address the impact of COVID-19. <clears throat> the three projects that province is presently undertaking uh, are the Danun is the Danun project in Raceway Park, which 
is intended to deliver about 1,500 uh, semi-permanent units. Uh, in Kosovo, another 2,000 units. And in Kailicha, uh, 3,000 units. Now, you did ask at the beginning for us to identify areas where uh, you could assist with interventions. And for the Itemba Farms land, province has, through the HDA and the National Department of Human Settlements, approached the National Department of Public Works uh, to release a piece of land uh, that could be used for these 3,000 units. And that has been ongoing since April, and we are yet to get confirmation uh, of the release of this land from public works so that well, detailed planning and design can commence on that. <clears throat> In respect of the Dunoon project, it's fairly well advanced. The planners have submitted the town planning um, uh, application to the city, and that's presently under consideration within the city. What's anticipated in all three of these developments is a move away from single-story temporary shelter to semi-permanent multi-story developments. Uh, and these are just uh, illustrations of what can be achieved. Provinces already called on proposals from various suppliers, and they are busy evaluating those proposals. And as soon as the town planning is approved, the construction of services will commence, followed by the construction of structures similar to this. In respect of the layouts, uh, this is just a quick uh, 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 reflection on the town planning layout for the Danoon uh, site. It, then in Kosovo, um, this is a site that's being acquired by province and the HDA currently. And the, on the next slide in the Temba, it's, it's a site that's um, currently owned by Public Works that uh, province would like to acquire for this development. Um, the Inkanini site is being undertaken by, pro, uh, by the city in Kailicha, and that's in, uh, expected to deliver about another 1,500 units. And uh, so, uh, I'll then move on to the USDG performance of the city. Um, I just want to give a quick overview of the city's performance over the past few years. Now, in respect of the USDG, um, I've just quickly listed the different uses or the purposes that it can be, uh, the funding can be used for, which is essentially the bulk and link infrastructure but also the city funds all of its internal engineering services within new BNG developments from the USDG. We also look at service sites uh, to accommodate non-qualifiers or upgrading with informal within informal settlements, uh, the provision of individual services connections to the house the sites, and then to increase the land provision for informal settlement upgrading, subsidized housing and other developments. In other words, where we acquire land through the HSD, through the USDG. We also use it to, to construct and deliver public facilities and other social economic facilities, facilities such as libraries, clinics and the likes and also then to provide interim basic services in upgrades. So if we look at the city's performance over the last few years since the grant was introduced in 2015, uh, in 2015, there was 90% of the grant spent. In 2016, 91%. In 2017, 93%. Uh, unfortunately, it dropped a bit in 2018 and 2019 to 88%. Um, the current or the, the financial year that has just finished at the end of June um, uh, is the last column, which reflects 82%. But that was as at the 14th, and the city had until the 17th, which is today to process the last invoices 
uh, for payment against this grant. So we are fairly confident that it would be much higher than 82 percent. Uh, we're aiming for 90 percent. Um, but over the past five years, that, that has been the performance of the city against its USDG allocation. Okay, and that, that's the end of our presentation. I'll now hand over back to you, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's the end of the presentation. Colleagues, can I see whoever wants to have a bite? Just shout, I will note you. Colleagues, can I see whoever wants to interact with the presentation? Yes, Acha. Yes, Next. Boom, sir. The other one? Uh, Honorable Hadebe. Hadebe. Next person. Hendrix. Is it the only the only four colleagues? Okay. I presume you don't. I've already noted you, Honorable Mpumza. Mute that mic of yours. Can you mute it? And second. So it's the only four colleagues, it's okay. Then let me start by Honorable uh, Teza. No, and me too, Chair. Uh, hey, you? Where were you? I was printing. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Teza? No, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, and let me appreciate the, a very uh, a comprehensive uh, uh, presentation from the city of Cape Town in terms of the human settlements and the developments that they have presented here. Uh, but I will have I have some 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 issues chair in terms of uh, the, the 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 infrastructure development in the city of Cape Town. I do have a serious problem there because uh, if you look at, uh, uh, there is a video that I, 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 I flighted on the, on the group uh, where water is flooding, right? Uh, I'm not even talking about the, the, for, the informal settlements, Chairperson. I'm referring to formal settlements uh, in Kaili Chasite C, in Luyolofville, in Kupletu, um, in Zwezwe, in Dunon. And, and this is happening almost every time uh, in winter when, when it is. Yeah, in police. Police? Yes, Chair. Can you hear me, Chair? Yeah. That, yeah. Now it's better. Can you repeat Yes, you can. Maybe, maybe I should raise my voice. I was saying that, Chair, uh, I do have a... I appreciate the... We appreciate the, 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 the presentation uh, that, that, that is a detailed presentation from the city of Cape Town. And uh, we do so because it is, it is earnestly uh, uh, clear that they, they want to develop some areas in Cape Town and uh, my issues pertain to the um, infrastructure development and secondly the 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 the, the grossly poor uh, drainage system not even in in areas where they they they, they there's formal there's informal uh, settlements but in areas where where there is formal settlements uh, such as uh, 
Site C in Kailisha, in Tunon, uh, in Luyoloville, in, in, in Kukuletu, where you, you have seen during winter season, Chepesin, the flooding uh, uh, of, of those formal settlements as a result of the poor planning and the poor uh, 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 and the grossly poor uh, infrastructure development. Uh, I do have a problem because uh, I would have I would have <laughs> said that perhaps if I was in the in the place of the mayor, uh, take the same model that is at Bishop Court, right, and and use the same infrastructure when I am dealing with Kukuletu and all other areas. Do you understand? Because mayor, it is the same city, most. it is the same people, it is the same uh, objective to develop our people, uh, right? Beyond uh, 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 color lines, beyond politi political lines there, but for, for, for service, for proper. Because mayor, when you, when, when, you, when you have a situation of drainage like that, uh, you, you, you are going to have to go back to that situation right and, and 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 fix it over and over again so what is the sustainable drainage uh, 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 program of to 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 fix all drainage systems in those in those formal settlements like Wukuletu, you know so that you do not go back mayor and fix those things those things are in place in fact chairperson uh, i always have a view whenever settlements even in rdp in other uh, uh, municipal municipalities and other provinces, uh, Mayor, that uh, you have you have a situation where RTPs are just built, right? Let me not even quote uh, Cape Town. In Pumalang, they just built uh, RTPs. You do not have an infrastructure first, you know, in terms of where the sports uh, are the sports grounds going to be, where are the where are the recreational facilities going to, to be? Where is proper drainage system? Because when I went to site B to, my, to visit my brother, right? Uh, at the entrance there, feces were facing me. You can imagine, Mayor, when, 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 it's, when it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a rainy season, surely those feces will go straight to, 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 to the doors of, 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 of residents. So, so that de dehumanization kind of uh, kind of thing, uh, we we want to deal with it uh, permanently. So, what are the strategies to, to 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 put measures in place to deal with those things permanently? Uh, what is your view in terms of uh, having having construction companies that are located within now your 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 your, your city now, uh, uh, Mayor, where you are going to employ people that. If there is a pothole uh, in, in a particular area, you know exactly who you to talk to. No company is going to come and tender for that, for, that, for that particular thing. There is a particular person that you have employed there as a, as a, as a council to actually deal with potholes on a daily basis. What is your view in that? Don't you think that that would be, have been a sustainable way manner in which we can deal with with the provision of infrastructure instead of uh, always when we come here we will we will we will do co will complain about the same issues we will come and complain about the same issues of of of, of putting drainage when in actual fact we can uh, uh, decide to to put uh, sustainable measures in place uh, uh, may at the very onset to say that okay uh, we do not want to go back to the same problems. We do not want to rely on, on companies that are going to provide uh, 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 people with, with, uh, with, with cheap material in terms, of, in terms of the drainage system and cast the problems that are, that are plugging those, those, those areas. Uh, I, 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 I have a serious problem there in terms of, 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 of the development and the, and the, the sustainable uh, uh, work that has to be done in terms of uh, Kukuletu and Lyoloville and other areas where you want to put, put measures in place. You don't want to go back to that area. You want to, you, to maintain that area uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the infrastructure. Because whenever there is flooding, 
uh, people will have to, if I was a businessman, uh, a mayor and chairperson, I would really be smiling in Cape Town because uh, I know that they, their beds will be wet and they won't be user friendly anymore. People will come back to me and just uh, uh, on, on yearly basis buy beds and buy uh, uh, all, all utensils uh, because they have, they, they have been uh, washed in floods. So, 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 so what are measure, uh, measures in place to, to, to firstly, when you develop or, or de-densify informal settlement, uh, 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 begin with infrastructure development in place. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Pessy. Thank you so much, Honorable Treza. Honorable Mpumza. Honorable Mpumza. Thank you. Yes, you are on the floor. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And let me present by the city of Cape Town. Presentation on intervention around the question of uh, intervention in informal. Colleagues, can you hear what Honorable Mbumza is saying, or is only me? No. 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 You can't hear me. Mbumza, you seem to. You seem to have a very serious challenge of network. Not getting him now. Try it. Let's see. Yeah, you'll be the last one. Yeah, I think it will be critical that prior to the meeting you test your network, ne? It's still the same like yesterday. We are battling to hear you. Failing which, write down and send them to us. We're going to raise them with the mayor. Hadeve. Chairperson, don't forget me. Ne? I've been Yes. Th thank you. Hello. Yes. Honorable Joe. Yes. Chairperson, what do you do once you miss the opportunity to ask questions? Okay. Uh, Honorable Adam. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and thank you to the. Honorable Adam. Yes, Chair. Yes. Proceed. All right. No, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and thank you to the delegation of the city of Cape Town, as led by um, Alderman Dan Plato. Uh, Chair, indeed, uh, in our previous engagement, we had requested a human settlement plan for the city of Cape Town with specific reference to Kailija. Uh, the reason why we requested the plan, Chair, it's simple, based on pure logic, that in order for one to be able to plan accordingly, one needs to know what he or she is dealing with. Now, there's a saying, Chair, that goes as follows. You can't fix what you don't measure. Meaning, you cannot know whether or not you are successful unless success is defined and tracked. Now, when we're dealing with the plan, Chair, uh, we welcome what has been presented thus far. But there are certain key issues that are missing in order for us to qualify the presentation as a fully detailed plan. And I'll tell you what are those issues, Chair. Uh, we, we were expecting to get a sense uh, uh, in terms of within the entire city, how many people are in need of human settlement? That, 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 that's number one. Second to that, Chair, we, we need to know uh, 
how many informal settlements are there within the city? Yes, we've been given the figure of 464. Within that uh, uh, informal settlement, how many people do qualify either for BNG, CRU, and PHP? Now, that will help you plan accordingly. You or If you already know how much people are in need of human settlement, you classify them according uh, to their qualification. These ones qualify for CRUs, these ones qualify for BNGs. Then you go on with, with your plan. How many TRAs currently do we have within the city? And these are temporary relocation areas. And for how long have they been there? Because you, you have a situation where in the city, uh, the temporary relocation units become permanent. So when drafting a plan, these are the issues that I thought we will see coming forth. The other aspect, which is key and critical, Chair, how much land is available within the city and how much land is vacant, how much it's owned by the city, how much is owned by province and nation, how much is privately owned, so that when we push and fast track our project of expropriation without compensation, we know exactly what we are dealing with. Now, that's the missing uh, aspect within the plan that has been presented thus far. We therefore, Chair, need to know how much can the city accommodate in terms of the demand and what are the plans for the shortfall. That will ultimately lead to what the city uh, can term as their critical path. Who are the priority uh, 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 beneficiaries? For example, those that live in wetlands, they will be classified. No, these ones are a priority. Those who have been on the waiting list for far too long. We also expected to get an understanding. Do you have people that you will relocate because of the conditions and situation which they live under? Or are you planning in some of your projects, are you going to be decanting people? And where will you be relocating those people to? Chair, without this, uh, it, it will be very much difficult for us as a portfolio committee to execute our oversight responsibilities. Yes, you have, they've touched on the issue of budget. We, we welcome, but we're also expecting an overall budget to say for us as a city to be able to successfully uh, achieve uh, affordable, decent human settlement for the citizens of Cape Town, this is what we will need. And this is how long uh, it will take us to accommodate everyone. I know that it is practically impossible to accommodate everyone, but if you have a sense and the picture of where you are going, you are able to plan accordingly. Also, in terms of integrated planning, how much housing is planned by the province? So far, we've only been told about 11 projects. We don't know at what stage are those 11 projects. Uh, when it comes to national, there were only three areas that we identified, including the issues of, of, of Langa. Now, Chair, the frustration out there for our people is that they have been waiting for far too long for housing. And I can attest to some of their frustration. One case in point, the housing development in Hout Bay, Imi Zamoyetu, Chair, it started in 2007 when Madam Helen Zile was still a mayor. She left. Alderman Dan Plato came. He left. Alderman Patricia Delil came. She left. Alderman Dan Plato is back. More than a decade, people of Hout Bay in Zamoyetu have been waiting for housing, and that project still reflect 
within the program of the city. Now, for someone who don't know where does this originate, a person will think this is a new project. This is a project that is dating from 2007, more than a decade. Some of the beneficiaries within that project have already passed on. Others have died. Others were not born at the time when this project was conceived. So this is the frustration. And there are more than one project that I've already identified that they date back uh, in, into decades. So what we we'll want to request the chair, it's a report that will give us a sense and indication of all these projects. When did they start it? When were they conceived? And what is the expected date of completion so that we can measure your progress, your success accordingly. The devil is in the details. Without those details, we will think everything is hunky-dory. Another a, a project chair that I also like to get clarity on, it's the project, the Drift Sand project. Uh, this project was subjected to section 33. And at that time, uh, the, the Mayor was Patricia Delil, and the NEC had, uh, already approved that project, but it appears there are delays. So I'd like to get an understanding what is happening within those uh, uh, projects. So, Chair, those are the issues that I feel uh, uh, it's the missing link. It, it's, it's not giving us a sense so that, you see, a member who is not familiar with city of Cape Town, when reading this project, might think the city is equal to the task, everything is hunky-dory. But for us, who knows that the project, I can list a, a, a plethora of them, but I, I, I don't have time to do that. Hence, I'm requesting that chair will be given a follow-up report that will indicate when did each and every project start how much it's budgeted for, how much was spent, and what is the expected time for completion. Other than that, Chair, uh, we, we thank uh, the City of Cape Town under the leadership of Den Plato for the presentation. See, insufficient as it is, it's work in progress. It indicates uh, 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 the willingness to, to, to cooperate in terms of cooperative governance. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe. Honorable Mkalipi. Oh. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I just want to join my colleagues by welcoming the presentation from the city of Cape Town as well. Mayor, thank you very much for making into this meeting. Uh, I wanted to start by asking you, Mayor, how do you feel after you lost the court case on the 14th of July, because last time we engaged you and we engaged the, uh, the province on the approach that you, City of Cape Town, and the Western Cape Provincial Government, we are very quick to go to court instead of engaging with the people, with the challenges that you are facing. And then we are very quick to evict people, especially the poorest of the poor. I remember very well, Mayor, I even said to you, why are you an enemy of black people? And you defended yourself and you said, no, you are not the enemy of the black people. We are the product of the black people. So most of the time you run to court and most of the time you win court cases. But this one, it was delivered on the 14th of July. You have lost it. And now, please answer me direct. How do you feel with your entire cabinet when you lost such cases whereby you just run to court without engaging, without finding solution in terms of how to get solution instead of going uh, to court and knowing very well that the poorest of the poor, they can't even defend themselves to court because one, if you go to court, you must have money. And a as a person that you claim that you are not the enemy of the poorest of the poor. So poor people can't defend themselves because they are not rich. You know very well the history of our country. And even now, after the democracy, after 1994, we still experienced what we experienced before. And knowing very well that this land that you are talking about, Mayor, is the land that was also taken by force by those people 
1652 coming from all the way from their own different countries. So that's why we are saying that land expropriation without compensation is the solution to the problem, to the challenge that is faced with our people. I just want to hear your comment and your MMC of housing uh, on that uh, court case. That is one. Number two, I just want to get a clarity on you. Regards to Kolani, if you have also met with him and also apologized to him about what happened when you stripped his dignity. I know very well that you are going to say there's an investigation. We saw your letter that you sent to the committee. But to be human, did you go and meet with him and apologize just to be human, let alone what happened and then you justify what happened? Just on the side of being a human being, to say that no one deserves to be treated the way your law enforcement, that, that also a report to you, uh, treated him. So did you go and uh, meet with him and did you find solutions among yourself and him? Or you think that he is not important because it's just a, a poor rest of the poor? He does not deserve your attention as the mayor or as a structure. And then secondly... Now, since we have got an information that uh, we have not evicted people since we called you in this committee, which we also emphasize that during COVID-19, it was so unnecessary, it was so inhuman for you, and we don't even hide about how we feel as this committee. How can you be so heartless to evict people in this cold weather? I believe that in Cape Town, it's still cold even if it's not cold, to evict people without any proper plan. As a result, that's why we said come back to this committee and give us your plans in relation to accommodate people who are landless in their own country. Let me emphasize that. They are landless in their own country. So therefore, thanks very much for coming. So I agree with the Honorable uh, Peggy to say that although you came and present with us, but uh, there are some things that we need to get uh, from you because it's not uh, complete, the presentation. It's not that uh, we always forever not satisfied as a committee, but unfortunately we represent especially the people who are voiceless, who depend on us to speak on their behalf and for the country as well. Secondly, the presentation. I just want to get, because it was not clear on the presentation, when you said, not you, Mayor, but I mean, when I'm saying you, you'll understand that I'm talking to your delegation. When you talk about the backyard project, in the presentation, you just mentioned in terms of the backyard project, only water that you provide. But just give us in details, what do you mean a backyard? A backyard, what kind of a person who's, who's, who's living in the backyard? So when you are just providing water, what are you saying in terms of the structure? Please clarify that when you talk about the backyard project, what does it in entails? The, the COVID project as well. I think Honorable Peggy spoke lengthy about the COVID project, but I also am not clear. When you are saying that you have identified a, a, a land through the department, uh, national department, uh, areas like Danun and other areas will be catered for, so if you are going to only cater for those uh, people from Danun and other informal settlement, so it comes back to the question that uh, uh, other honorables ask about the total uh, number of informal settlement and how are they going to be accommodated because the crisis is not going to be resolved if you are going to say the land is going to accommodate section, a certain section from section informal settlement. Because our aim to call you back here is to find out from you how do you address this issue of evictions that you guys you are very excited about. So when you talk about COVID projects, please clarify that. How do you accommodate the entire people who are in need of housing? Uh, secondly, uh, I know that I got information from my councillors to say that since then we have not evicted people. But in the meantime, we are frustrating people because we are not giving them services from those informal settlement. My councillors are telling me they've been calling you nonstop, your offices to say, please provide the basic services for the people who does not have in these informal settlements. 
in different areas like Tembe, Nezwezwe, Henbeg, etc. You'll know very well. Your office or the office that is supposed to be responsive, they are not even responding to the calls of your own councillors, of which you know very well as a councillor as well. Supposed to have to be the people um, uh, representing the people in the council. So if you also undermine your own people, who are the representatives of the own, of the people in the council? How much more the ordinary person in the street? How much more they are going to be frustrated if your own representatives is not, is so disrespected in such a way that you don't even respond to their call if they call you on behalf of the people. Uh, the presenter also spoke about the PHP, which is the people housing uh, process. I just want to get um, a very clear explanation or details in that regard, because I know that there are so many NGOs, also the women who organize themselves, uh, who want to work with the city of Cape Town and all other cities around the country, and also the national government also uh, uh, invited them in many res respects and in many regards because, because we have to also uh, come with other options of addressing the needs for housing. We can't have only one uh, type of housing in South Africa. So the PHP, which NGOs or which uh, 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 women um, uh, uh, organizations or organizations okay, from the community that you work with. Because there is one that I think it came long time ago to national government after 1994. And it was also uh, agreed with the minister Sisulu before he, she came back now. And they presented a very, very progressive um, presentation in terms of how to tackle the, the PHP. Uh, those women, I know, may or maybe you might know, one of the leaders there is Mzwandi Lezulu. Uh, I'm not sure which era she resides. And the name of the NGO is led by Joel Polnik. And I know they've been advocating for the people's housing process, which also talks to the poorest of the poor, whereby they save, and then they went to the city to say, please, uh, let us meet ha us halfway. Instead of giving us one room or two room, Tina, as women, we are going to build four room, but only the services because it's technical. You as city are going to provide us with those technical skills. So are you also uh, engaging those type of community leaders who come with that concept? Thank you very much, Chair, for now. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi, Honorable Hendricks. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, uh, I, I was a councillor in the city of Cape Town for seven years. I also served on the appeals committee, and we addressed uh, housing issues uh, every month uh, during my term as a member of the appeals committee. We've listened to the presentation, and uh, it's quite clear that uh, the executive mayor is very passionate about providing housing. He is passionate, Honorable Chair, because he comes from the Cape Flats, which has always been the Cinderella when it comes to services and housing. We were hoping that when the mayor came back the second time, that he will continue his passion to provide housing. We also have, we must, from the presentation, come to the conclusion that the mayor has a very good team that can address the challenges with housing. However, if I look at the presentation, it looks as if they are only good enough to address 10% of the housing needs of the city of Cape Town. So there needs to be interventions. Something has to happen to look at the needs of the other 90%. I know uh, I went on the record as calling for uh, the city to be put under administration. Uh, and maybe for that 90%, that, is, uh, that must be on the radar because the city is not in a position to provide for the housing needs of 90% of the people in the city. The problem, Honorable Chair, is that the city doesn't provide one cent for top houses. The other problem is 
that the national government does not give the Western Cape and the city of Cape Town enough money uh, to face the challenges when it comes to housing. So if you don't, if the city doesn't provide any money, if the government doesn't provide any money, they are sending the people of Cape Town as far as it comes to housing to the dogs. We are in a hopeless situation, Honorable Chair. But let me give you some hope. Honorable Chair, you know, like yourself, many of us, uh, we were very good in the underground. So for the past seven years, while I was in the city of Cape Town, I looked around. No use criticizing. What can we do to solve the housing crisis in the city of Cape Town? And I've got a suggestion, and I want to suggest, Honorable Chair, that you budget for a helicopter so we can fly over an area which is called Pedi. Pedi is along the Lanzan Road. Uh, Pedi is in the Philippi area. Pedi, there, over the last 10 years, uh, millions and millions of city money has gone into Pedi to build infrastructure. There are roads. There is good planning. They spend millions of rand. The best uh, urban planning mines in Cape Town, they became rich because a lot of the money went to them. So Pedi is an area that can provide 40,000 houses. The services are in. The curbs, the curbs are there. There is provision for uh, churches. There is provision for factories. It is near farmland areas. You can, uh, you know, you can farm. It is uh, hidden away. And that's why I want you to start budgeting for a helicopter because the area is so big and it can accommodate uh, much of the housing needs of Cape Town Honorable Chair. And uh, so I want to put that challenge to you because I know you are up to challenges. Go and ask the city to do a presentation on Pedi. But before that, Get the helicopter and see how big that area is. It is a safe area. It is surrounded by our people. It's surrounded by uh, squatter camps, informal settlements, where the African child is uh, being evicted and cries. You've heard, uh, you've seen the indignity uh, that the other member of the AFF spoke about. But you must still see the children crying when their structures are, are evicted. I cry when I see that, Honorable Chair, and I've seen it. And lastly, Honorable Chair, uh, Masipumaleli is where most of our sailors' children and grandchildren live uh, over the last 20 years, and they live alongside uh, canals. And the children, the African child there, lives in Shugrich, they play in Shugrich, they eat in sewerage, and after the Cape of Storms, they sleep in sewerage. So the MEC, the, the, the uh, uh, Mayor of Committee member for housing this year, he's promised them a TRA to take them out of those most horrific conditions which the public protector, when I, when I ensure that she visit the area, said it's the worst living conditions she's seen in her life, not only in South Africa, but all over the world. We've done a lot of work there, Honorable Chair. And I'm very disappointed in the presentation doesn't provide for the TRA for those people to be moved from the side of the seven canals to an area that the ANC mayor Mama India identified uh, uh, 10 years ago to move those people to. The honorable uh, uh, treasurer of the ANC even went through a walk there and uh, 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 since the city took over the administration of the ANC, they threw those people to the dogs. You know why, Honorable Chair? Because uh, the nearby suburbs, the rich suburbs, they don't want black creep into white areas. They don't want colored creep into, into, into black areas. We haven't even had time to speak about the apartheid spatial planning in the city of Cape Town. You must have seen all the projects are far away from the white suburbs. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Helicopter, please, Honorable Chair. <laughs> <laughs> and we drive there, Honorable, and do we really need the helicopter? <laughs>
So we can drive around. Well, honorable Chair, we have to go on the helicopter. You can drive around, but it will take the whole day, and the terrain is uh, not so nice. Uh, for you to appreciate that area, you need to see the surroundings. That's where our people live. Our people live around all that particular area. Maybe it will, you own one. It will, it will become, place. honorable Chair, it mm. will become industrial hub was more economic activity than Cape Town, Canal Walk, and the airport. Okay. I saw the plans. I told you I work underground on the Oh, I see. It's an interesting place to visit. I think even the colleagues in the committee, I think they are hearing you, Honorable Member. And uh, the next uh, person on my list is Honorable To. Honorable To. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. I think my question, let me just go straight. But let me firstly welcome the, the, the presentation and also welcoming our deputy ministers. My question will go straight to the issue of the, because we are this more on the, the success. What are your key success uh, do you have in our, uh, Okay, sorry. Let me sit up straight. I can't. Uh, okay. Uh, Chairperson, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, okay. On? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, Honorable Mayor, if you are a uh, a good management, you'll, you'll have a good results in having good municipalities. And some of the key results areas are as follows, good planning, which I can see you don't have, organizing, staffing, delegating and supervising, lastly measuring and reporting. Excellent program overall require excellent performance in each of these areas. Poor performance in any area can damage and even threaten the future and progress of your municipalities. Now, the question will be: What are what are your key success? Success in the contractor incubation program, which initiated to create an environment that will enable growth and development of small and medium-sized construction enterprise to become sustainable enterprise for women contractors and youth. Could you please just share with us? Number two, how many young people undertook the youth service program in the built environment and trained in accredited built environment expertise in partnership with NHBRC and NYC, which is somehow is missing in, 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 in your report? And then another one, uh, share with us you are implementation of biometrics system to combat fraud in the allocation of horses. Because I haven't mentioned you, I haven't had you mentioning about the issue of the total people that are on the waiting list. And then again, from which year waiting list beneficiaries were being overtaken by emergencies? And uh, another one question, what have we not achieved and what are the reasons for that? The issue of misalignment of planning and funding for the bulk infrastructure and unavailability of suitable, well-located land. 
as my colleagues have mentioned that. And another question is, how much contract management capacity you enforce 30% local set aside? And another issue was about that uh, uh, you have mentioned many projects and uh, about the also the contractors, but are in planning stage or how many that are in implementation stage? Because we have just mentioned, but uh, I haven't he heard you mentioning about the issue of the planning stage. And then the another issue was about you just uh, that you are going to build an RDP without a proper framework plan for identifying one infrastructure for recreational facilities, schools, creches, and many other infrastructure that is needed in any new areas. But that, can't you see that is also going, you know, it, it, it will be a wasteful expenditure because those uh, learners that will be moving to those new areas, they will need a, a, a transport that will take in them to and from. That is also another wasteful expenditure. Can't you have a, a good measures in place so that we can be able to know and understand uh, that uh, this is our proper framework plan for our infrastructure because as of now, I haven't seen, as I've mentioned, that uh, there are areas that you need to be focused on. Because if we don't have a good plan, I don't expect at the end of the day, next year we'll be sitting here again and discussing about the issue of good planning and organizing and all those things. And then we need also to know the total uh, people of uh, yeah, the, the issue of what your priorities of people that need RDP, which, is, which will be the people that are above or below or below 60 that will be receiving the, those uh, RDP houses. We need to explain a, a clear explanation about those issues. Uh, and then another issue, I think I was covered by my, 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 my leaders because they were asking you about that, that, uh, you know, enough land where you are going to build your RDP, how many people that are demanding those households? I think for now, my chairperson, I thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much, chairperson. Okay. Thank you, Matlo. Can you mute your microphone? Okay. Honorable Mpumza, are you still there? Honorable Mpumza, did you find a proper location? He seems to be struggling. While we are trying to get hold of him, let me just uh, deal with some few questions for now to the to the executive mayor and the team. Uh, I think the first one that one wants to get is with regard to the presentation wherein you have referred to the issue of the USDG and the expenditure pattern. Uh, the USDG was introduced to the city in 2011-12 financial years, as I think Honorable Hadewe has said that. But uh, there is this issue to say since its inception, the city has been returning money to national departments. Uh, and, and then we are looking now at this column that deals with the reductions per year. Uh, what are the reasons for the reductions if it's, it's not inability to spend? Mm, 
I'm raising it because uh, I recall two years ago, I read somewhere where in the Minister for Human Settlement has redirected funds from this city of Cape Town to other municipalities like, uh, I know Nelson Mandela Bay then got 200 million coming from the municipality. Uh, the other issue that you are referring to in terms of the spending, uh, can you tell us exactly in which parts of the city can we see this 90% spending you are referring to? Uh, I think then with the colleagues from Human Settlement, we can then get that report from them so that we are able to make a, a comparison. Actually, the other question that one wants to ask, when this project in particular actually started in the municipality, the project like a, the Somerset West Development, the Dito project, if you mentioned, the Morning Star project, uh, the Mokels Cottage project, the Beacon Value project, and the, the IMSA Moye 2 Phase 3 project. And then what is their actual status? That's the other issue that one wants to ask. In relation to the Morning Star project that I've mentioned, I think if you have managed to read your AG's report from 2017-18 and 2018-19, where in, a, I think I saw something like 786 million irregular expenditure declared by the AG. And if I'm to tell you where are these houses, yet there was no housing that was uh, built, safe to say this amount was used for professional fees. So the issue that I then, that's the issue that one, uh, uh, one must uh, understand. And then you have raised the issue of you not having land for housing. But currently, there's land that is then being disposed to private developers as we speak. Uh, it will give you a classical example of the prime land like a uh, Platekov and Clinton. And then when I look at this, I'm of the view that uh, the city in so doing is intending, it's, it's got seemingly intent on perpetuating apartheid special planning by relegating the poor and working class to Cape Town's peripheral areas far away from established economic opportunity and social development infrastructure, including a community facilities such as state-of-the-art medical facility, facilities found in the inner city and the inner city suburbs. Then when one look at this, uh, 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 and then the, yes, there's a plan that you have put in place but uh, we have also had issues where in arrays of a uh, farm, small farm scale farmers who want land, and uh, uh, the land seems not to be available for them. Uh, the city doesn't seem to have a program to also incorporate uh, the, 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 the most this historically disadvantaged people uh, by virtue that if they want land, small-scale farmers, they want land to farm, they are always told that there is no land. Uh, but you see all these issues of the disposal of land that is happening to, to private uh, individuals. And then the other issues that I felt I need to raise uh, is this issue of the housing. Uh, if the presentation is, you are saying that if housing is integrated way in the, way in, in the inner city and inner suburbs, uh, has the city created uh, and promoted affordable social housing? Uh, I'm trying to say it in relation to promotions that come in the form of rebates, rebates, land use, uh, and then incentives and penalties and fines and interests. 
Uh, the Western Cape government told uh, the Western Cape High Court on the 27th of November 2019 that it had no obligation to deliver social housing uh, in the inner city and in so doing reversed apartheid special planning. Do you agree with the perpetuation of apartheid special planning via the relegation of poor and working class, most of whom are historically disadvantaged uh, to apartheid created ghettos and townships on the peripheries, as I said earlier? Why has the city's DMS not been amended to bring it in line with Spluma to require affordable social housing units within private housing developments within the inner city and inner suburbs. And the last issue I want to raise is that why has the city not heeded the recommendation to roll out rainwater and fog water tanks to poor and working class households, both formal and informal housing on the Cape Flats, considering the concerns about access to sanitation and ablution facilities in the absence of the COVID-19 vaccine? And then how does the deficit in the municipal policy affect the promotion of the amendment act? that also form a in particular municipal policy. So I'm raising all these issues so that we, we are able to... And the last issue that I was forgetting, and why has the city also stopped the social development? Uh, 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 when I check on it, that development was... Uh, approved by the former year honorable Delile for mid-use development that women housing to working class. Let me pause here for now. If the time allows, then one will come back later. Over to you, Executive Mayor and team. Uh, Honourable Chairperson, thank you very much. I'm going to kick off with you, Honourable Chair, with some of the issues you raised and uh, some of the key housing issues and the USDG issues I will leave for the officials for Ray Lugaba and uh, Rihanna Pretorius to answer. Uh, just um, I want to say up front, I think... Uh, there's people giving the committee disinformation on many fronts with regard to many issues. The issue about the foreshore development, uh, that it is stopped, it is not stopped, it is underway. And I am awaiting a, a report about the foreshore development to come to Mako. So that is completely disinformation. That is why I'm saying, and that is why when you call Honorable Chair, I immediately accept the invitation to come to the committee to explain many of these inconsistencies, many of the issues. Also, uh, another point you raise, the issue with regard to uh, the rollout of water and water tanks to the poorer households and specifically to the informal areas. <clears throat> my understanding from my officials is, and we can test it, and I'm willing to enter into such an uh, arrangement that uh, we have water tankers and we procure the water tankers uh, to take water into the informal areas. And uh, we have about, uh, we have uh, heavy duty vehicles, trucks on a day to day basis. And in total, it is 28 of them that cart on a day to day basis water into our informal settlement areas. And that is happening. Um, if anyone dispute that, uh, I'm willing to enter into, into such a discussion. Um, the issue with regard to integrated housing uh, and inner city housing and many of the projects raised by Ray Rugaba and Rihanna Pretorius is exactly that. 
Many of our housing projects is not housing projects for colored people. It's not housing projects for African people on its own. It is integrated housing projects. Um, the, the issue with regard <coughs> to the platter of housing development, I want to say to you, uh, uh, we approve it in MAKO. It is an integrated development with a very large portion of affordable housing component, component built into that project. It is to have upmarket and to have lower upmarket and to have affordable part of the development to cater for all the people of income categories. And, and that is exactly what is going to happen with, with that project in Platekloof. Uh, Honorable Chair, the issue with other integrated projects, and uh, you ask where, how are we going to change apartheid spatial planning? That is high on our radar. It is exactly what the city of Cape Town are doing. Yeah, uh, once again, I refer to the to the Platterkloof project we approved. I uh, uh, there's the Paro project coming right in the middle of 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 Paro inner city and a Goodwood project right in the middle of Goodwood inner city. We have projects underway right in the middle of Maitland inner city, and we are waiting um, the Salt River project, the Salt River market project, and then Ray Rugaba did raise uh, the Conradi project. Um, and in the Conradi project, that will be one of the biggest integrated housing projects ever in the history of the city of Cape Town, well located near the railway station, near the near bus routes, um, near business nodes, and, and, and so forth. And we are well underway of changing the landscape in the city of Cape Town with regard to many of, of, of these projects. Um, I... I'm going to to uh, uh, leave the USDG issues and those issues for uh, Ray Rugaba to deal with. Some other issues to, uh, of the other honourable members, honourable member uh, Geza, um, and he refer mainly to infrastructure development. I I want to th say to him thank you very much uh, for his remarks, and I think he is spot on. He is right. Uh, Sustainable drainage programs is underway in the city of Cape Town. We do find problems with old underground infrastructure. The city is growing and uh, to replace the underground infrastructure costs the city of Cape Town um, millions and millions of rands. But uh, we do plan and budget uh, for the replacement of old ancient underground infrastructure. And I want to say to the committee, it is not only you find these problems, and I think um, the Honorable Geza made reference to that. He said uh, built areas, not even only informal areas. And uh, it is a fact, uh, Honorable Chair, that even old-fashioned areas on the Cape Flats uh, 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 and so forth struggling with the ancient uh, underground infrastructure. We need to replace many, many of the stormwater pipes and so forth. The drainage systems needs to be replaced. And we do have what we call a old underground infrastructure replacement program in place. That program is in place. It is driven by the Water and Waste Department and maybe Honorable Chair at a later stage, they could come and enlighten the committee with regard to that. Um, uh, Honorable Khadebe, um, uh, mentioned a number of key issues and, and Ray Rugaba and, Ray, and Rihanna can focus on, on many of, of these projects. Where's the Drift Sounds project? Uh, when did the project start? All that nitty gritty issues. I'm, I'm going to leave, uh, it's, more, it's mainly housing related and uh, I'm going to leave that for the officials to deal with, with your green light, Honorable Chair. Um, let me get to some of the issues raised by Honorable Gallipi and the issues with regard to the evictions. We don't appreciate any eviction, but with regard to the outbay case. And yes, I agree. Um, um, it was negative for the city of Cape Town, but I also want to caution. And that is why I always agree that we come and address the committee for the committee also to understand the limitations of the city of Cape Town, the problems the city of Cape Town facing. Um, and um, the issue there is we did pro uh, offer 
that person on that site, um, the half-built uh, uh, a Wendy house, we did offer the person two alternative sites and the person refused. And we said to the person, we will relocate you on a site not used by the city of Cape Town for municipal services. What is evident and what is happening in Cape Town and what I need to stress, Honorable Chairperson, people move on to land the city want to use for development. And that land, that site now in, Hung, uh, in Hungback is now gone for development. We now need to go and find another site. And the community, I can say to you, some people can rejoice about it, but I received since yesterday and even today lots of calls from hunger, lots of calls from, from residents very upset with that court ruling because they were looking forward to the development. And one structure on a site for meant for development and for meant for municipal services is now standing in the way of the provision of those municipal services and it is gone. And that is what's going to happen in other parts of the city as well, uh, where people move onto land. We can leave all the people that move illegally onto land. We can start we, we can stop to, to stop them. And I can say to you, like I said the last meeting a couple of weeks ago, we will not have any site left for proper housing development. What happened in Wallace Dean after the announcement of the court, people move into the parks in Wallace Dean, in Blue Combos, and other areas on the Cape Flats, and they invade the parks. They took the parks equipment away, and they go and put up structures there because we can't touch them. And what I'm trying to say, Honorable Chairperson, right or wrong, but in my capacity as mayor, I have to say it. Uh, and that is that many people abuse the lockdown measures. They abuse the regu regulations for their own benefit. And that is an issue we will have to address at one or, an, or another stage. The issue with regard to uh, Bulalani and uh, with regard to his dignity, I don't want to, uh, to say again what I've said at the previous session we were together, but yes, uh, Honorable Kalipi, I did uh, uh, try to get hold of, of uh, Bulalani. I did try to talk to him. Um, I even asked entities in Kayalicha to put me in touch with him, but I get a sense of he doesn't want to talk to me. Uh, but if he is still willing, and maybe you can assist, and I am still open and willing to talk to him. Um, the issue with regard to... I. I have to say, Honorable Kalipi, um, the two of us need to sit. I, I need to get a sense of, of, of your terminology that we are heartless. We are not heartless, uh, that, that we are excited about evictions. We are not excited about uh, evictions. What I've said before, and this is what I'm going to repeat. The committee needs to understand if we are not going to protect certain pieces of land. We will not be able to provide brick and mortar houses to many of our people. With the sites you have seen on the screen tonight, if people invade it tonight and we plan the development for brick and mortar houses, how long will it take us to get people off the land? And if we must leave them, we will never be able to develop houses. Then it means, and Honorable Kalipi, uh, she said it the last, the Honorable Member said it the last time, and I want to say to the Honorable Member, and I say it, and don't see me wrong, uh, uh, but I am going to say it. Many of our people will then only be destined only to live in shacks. My, uh, uh, I repeat myself, my plan is to get rid of the shack structures, to get people out of shacks, and uh, uh, Honorable Hanif Hendricks uh, and, and Khadebe, and I want to say to you guys, you know Cape Town, you understand Cape Town, you know my heart and that sort of thing, and some of you said it yourself, I want you to assist me to get rid of the shack structures around, in and around Cape Town. We, and we cannot say to people, just come and put up your tent. Just come and put up your structure. What is the alternate? And people many a times refuse to accept the city of Cape Town's alternate. We're losing land for development. 
as a result of illegal invasions. And I want to stress that in my capacity as mayor. We cannot build houses while we want to build houses and we get hammered for not providing houses. Um, the backyard project, what are we talking about? What we are saying, we, uh, uh, we have three, four, five structures in a backyard. The people in the house don't want to give the backyard as a, a toilet opportunity. In the middle of the night, a person wants to go to the loo. The doors are locked. They want to use electricity. The, the, prop is, is, the plug is pulled out. They can't use electricity, but they pay. They pay more than what the household in front pay the municipality. Some of them for a backyard structure pay up to six, seven hundred to eight hundred rand to nine hundred rand a month and they get a raw deal. What we are saying is those backyard structures are situated on city of Cape Town land. We now say to the houses, we accept the constraints they got. We give them a water point, a basement. We give them an electricity point, honorable chairperson, just as a means to make the life of the backyarders much, much better. Because they flock to our offices. Um, we have paid for electricity 300 rand in a week's time, and we can't even see the usage of a 300 rand worth of electricity. That is what we're talking about, the backyard program, but we also in, uh, filter the backyarders in into the formal housing projects. Uh, Councillor Malusi Boe in his address can say much, much more ab about that. And then the honourable members say, claim we don't respond to the calls of councillors, um, um, and specifically in, in the informal areas, there is no basic services provided. No, I, I dispute that vehemently. That is not the case. That is not true. I visit um, informal areas on a day-to-day -day basis. In this week, I was in Kayalicha. The ANC councillors, my ANC colleagues, my counterparts took me around in Kayalicha to show me where water is lying, what we must do, where we must fill up and that sort of thing. And all of those processes is underway, Honourable Chair. So it is, it is not true that we do not pay attention uh, to the informal areas and back backyard air structures with regard to basic services. And if any council is saying to you there is no services provision to those areas, what I've said before, they feed this committee with all the necessary wrong information. And I am willing uh, to engage the committee further to dispute all of those, those wrongs mentioned by certain people. And, we, and I am not undermining our own councils. I want to say, uh, at the previous council meeting, uh, we uh, um, uh, criticized by my, my colleagues, but I enter Nyanga the day after I enter in this week, Kayalicha. All my counter, my, my opposition councillors in Kayalicha and Nyanga, where the food parcels I provide, and I move into those areas to hand over the food parcels myself, to hand over the COVID packs myself, and to, to see to the situations, the conditions in those areas myself, and I am on record for that. And uh, then with regard to PHP, there's PHP projects underway. Um, let me see, there's a PHP project in, in Masipumalele. I will get to Masipumalele. There's currently a, a PHP project underway. And we are de and, and I will get to, to, to Honorable Member Hanif and his Masipumalele issues right now. Um, then, Chairperson, with regard to... Uh, let me just see if I dealt with all the honourable members' issues. Yes, uh, with regard to Honourable Hanif, my friend, uh, good to see you once again. And uh, uh, thank you for the, the, the beautiful words about, yes, I am passionate and for you confirming that. Um, and But yes, my friend, we do have limitations. Honourable honorable Chairperson, I think you will agree with me. Government as a whole facing many, many challenges. The city of Cape Town is no exception. Tonight, we try to put our best foot forward with a very good comprehensive presentation to you. You identify limitations. And yes, Honorable Chair, I am more than willing to come back 
to answer all the unresolved issues we did not put in the presentation so that we can walk a path with you as a committee to showcase to you the willingness of the city of Cape Town pro to provide the poorest of the poor what we need to provide them. To, to solve the housing crisis in Cape Town, it is evident to all metropolitan areas, not Cape Town alone. This is our plan. Yes, there is limitations in the plan. Yes, Yes, we can deal with the limitations, we can rectify the limitations, and at the end of the day, uh, we, we are, are geared to do that. The issue with regard to Perry, and, and I will take Honorable Hanif um, Hendricks's word with regard to 15,000 prospected houses that could be provided. I will look into that. But um, looking at, um, at uh, Perry as well, we support Perry. Um, we look. Bef I am keen uh, to, uh, I'm a person for infrastructure-led economic growth. It is no use in a massively informal area like Perry and surrounds that we go and provide everything on the ground. But you don't look at the underground. You don't look at the infrastructure. When I became mayor, I can say to you that road, stock road, and Honorable Hendricks was for a month or two during my term here, was councillor down here. And Honorable Chairperson, I need to say to you, I, when I drive down that road after people alert me to that, to a, a hundred meter strip to drive with your car, you take an hour. And I said, sorry, it is not on. And, um, and, uh, and I said, that road, we need to finish the road. We did finish the road. People are very happy. But there's more work in that nodal point to be done. And, and I thank you for, for, for alerting me to the possible uh, prospectives that nodal point can provide the city of Cape Town. We will clearly look into that. Uh, with regard to Masipumalele, the issue that you find the worst conditions in, Masu, in, in Masupumalele in, the, in Cape Town, um, and you just see children playing in sewage. I, the last couple of months, visit Masipumalele quite often, and, and, and I find a different kind of a story. Um, I did not find people playing in sewage, and uh, I did not find massive drains overflowing in Masipumalele. This, this is again the, the misconceptions, Honorable Chair, I identified tonight and I put to the committee tonight. Um, um, the, the point is there's, there's housing development taking place, and talking about PHP, there is a PHP housing development currently taking place in Masipumalele. And yes, I agree, we need more houses in Masipumalele. And people talking about the infrastructure around Masipumalele. What we want to do, we have said, we cannot want to shift people out away in more dire situations and conditions, look at the infrastructure. And that is why there was complaints about upgrading of the, of the road infrastructure. But, it, but people want to travel nicely and, and, and they, they want to get a, a, away uh, from uh, what we call uh, the pile up of vehicles in the roads and that sort of thing. That is why infrastructure for me is very, very important and very key. And that is what exactly what we have done in um, Masipumalele. But yes, more houses need to be built in that area as well. The same with Imizamuyetu. There's a plan for massive housing development in Imizamuyetu. Our planning stages, um, all uh, the development mental stages is, is nearly completed. It is driven by provincial government, uh, assisted by the city of Cape Town. And maybe I can ask our director, Ray Rugoba, to give some more insight with regard to that. And before we hand over to Ray, maybe Councillor Malusi Boy want to add something I miss. Or can we go directly into Ray Rugaba? Yeah. Thanks, Sebastian. And thanks, uh, thanks uh, Chapasin, and thanks to the mayor. And good evening, colleagues, and also members of parliament that are present today, members of the committee. I just want, I think, mayor has uh, dealt with the majority of the issues. But I just want to say uh, up front, uh, from 
Honorable uh, Henry. I don't think as a city we will have budget for the helicopter, but because of the number of work or the vast areas that we're dealing with, I think if you can sponsor that helicopter, I think the mayor, it will take him not less than, it will take him less than a day to cover that. But if you can sponsor that, uh, I'm sure the mayor will appreciate it. But I also want to make an indication, uh, Chair. I must also thank one of your members, uh, Councillor Hadebe, who in the, pa in, the, in the past 48 hours, he has been writing to us, asking us to remove people that are invading land in Kailicha uh, in an area called, uh, in a project that we have on our budget, which is Mahama. He knows very well that if that land is compromised, uh, he knows it that we will have lost uh, opportunities of people that have you been mean, houses. That, boy, you mean Honorable Adam? Yeah, Honorable Hadebe, yes. Honorable oh, Hadebe. I was getting confused. You're talking about one councillor Hadebe. Yes. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, he has been a councillor for a while, so <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, he has been, uh, so he has written to us formally, requesting us to remove people that were invading uh, land in, in Kailicha. So we appreciate that. And it talks to what the, the mayor was saying, that he, uh, as the city, we listen to councillors and also members of parliament because now we have been able to secure that site because that particular site, Chaperson, is going to give us and it's going to benefit people of Kailicha more than 1,100 uh, housing opportunities. And also, having said that, perhaps let me attempt to go uh, as the sequence that you have uh, asked the members to. On, on oh, Honourable Kaza, I think... On the issue of infrastructure, I, it is a, a, a very uh, challenging uh, issue because of it's, it's in, informed by urbanization, as you would know. That's why it not only affects informal settlements and it also affects formal areas. Because if you go to, for instance, on areas that he has identified, areas Dainun, uh, uh, Suezwe, uh, Luolo, if you look at uh, in those areas, that's why Danuni we have identified it as one of the areas that where we need to do the densification program. It's one of the priority areas uh, in Zuelicha. It's one of our areas that we have prioritized. On the presentation that was presented by Rihanna and Ray, you'd see it that in also in the past week, it's a it's a it's a project that we are very much excited about because it's going to give us a yield of more than eleven thousand houses. Those, uh, that particular project, that's why we are very much uh, adamant to clear those sites on people who are trying to invade because those people have been waiting for quite some time. So uh, also on the issues of amenities, I'm happy that he raises that point because this point is a, a point that we've been raising uh, as the city and particularly as human settlement, that not in every space that exists within the city of Cape Town, we need to erect houses. We need to build communities. Communities... We need when we when we build communities and not just drop houses. It means we need to have other amenities. We need to have clinics. We need to have schools, uh, and so on, libraries, etc. So that is the kind of uh, system. But immensely, we we do need also. If you look at the Liolo that he has counted, Liolo is part of the bigger project now that we have invested uh, millions of rents. Where we're going to do an upgrade not only around Liolo, also in 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 Langa. Uh, that project is underway. Uh, uh, Ray uh, made a presentation on on that particular project, and and I think minimum of about eight million on investment in terms of the USDG that has been that will be utilized uh, in in doing so. Uh, also, I think the mayor has touched on uh, Honourable Hendricks in relation to enough money from national government. We we do understand that there is not enough money to build houses. We know that. Not only me, even yourselves, and because uh, of the the funds at our coffers that are not enough uh, from uh, from a national front, we we do understand that. But I do want to say and make a very important point, and I think also, Chair, you 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 mentioned the point in terms of dealing with uh, apartheid special planning. It's part of our priority. Let me let me cite one or two examples. One mayor has indicated the issues of the inner city development that we're doing. In December, uh, I personally handed over a site to, uh, to Communique, who will be doing a project in, in Salt River, which is a Salt River market that the mayor cited. 
that project is underway. It's not something that is a pipe dream. We have a, a, a social partner that is on site. Next to that project, which is in the inner city as well, in the Woodstock area, we have a, a project that we, I handed over to Soko, which is a social partner as well. Uh, it's on Pine Road. That, side, that particular project is underway. Uh, uh, other projects have been presented uh, as well in on, on, on the presentation by Ray. I just wanted to make a highlight of that, that we are dealing with social housing. Social housing is the future, and social housing is, remains our priority as the, as, the, as the city of Cape Town. Because what social housing does, it caters for those who earn more than 3,500, but less than 22,000 rand, the missing middle. That's, what, uh, that's the term that is uh, mostly known. So we are prioritizing that and making sure that uh, it also Platycliff, as many of you might know it, it's an affluent area. Now, if we have done such a, a social housing project in that particular area, it demonstrates our commitment uh, to deal with the apartheid social uh, planning. Also, on, on Masipumendele, if I can give, uh, uh, when, when Honorable Hendricks takes his helicopter around, he must see in, P in, in, in Masipumendele, as I speak to you now, there are 227 units that are being built. Uh, I've handed over some of the houses to, to beneficiaries already that are staying there. You, you will see it. It's not a pipe dream. It's, a con it's construction on site. Uh, we'll be completing that project uh, in this particular financial year. Uh, I, I do want to say, uh, Chair, on the issues, I think uh, some of the issues who Honorable Kalipi has, has raised I want to make this point that we, are, we have never done any form of eviction. I know it's a, con it's a conversation that we, we always want to raise on, but there's a difference between evictions and illegal invasions. And we'll continue to deal with legal in illegal invasions. And I was so happy that Dr. Nkosa Zanat Zuma, when, when she was here in the, in, the past, in the last meeting, she emphasized that particular point. However, we all condemned the action that was taken by our officers. But however, she did allude to the fact that uh, illegal invasions are not allowed even during lockdown. So I want to make that a particular point. We do, however, doing our level best. In terms of the PHP, the, the, the ladies that are PHP, national government has, has, has come to uh, all this, written to all the municipalities there's now i think m members must familiarize themselves with the national housing code going forward because national government has written uh, to all the has developed a policy on how are we going to deal with phps and they draw experience from that because some of the projects that were done through php some were substandard uh, some of the units had to be rebuilt now they had to find a, a better model uh, from national government on how to deal with them with the matter now there are certain there's a certain criteria of people that they need to meet we don't just get anybody i can't just meet a friend on the street and say they must be a php there's a certain criteria which needs to be vetted and we, we have a panel that we work with through the province uh, that has uh, those people and in that panel there are women uh, construction uh, contractors I think what Councillor Hadeben uh, is uh, is looking for now, it's something that is available uh, to us, and we'll make sure that we finish the committee going forward in terms of the total need. I mean, uh, the, the numbers that we have on our database is plus minus 300,000. But the segments are different, as he has alluded to. You have those who qualify for BNG units, which is normally known as RTP houses, those who earn from nothing up to 3,500. And from 3,501 upwards up until to 15,000, you have got those people who participate on the, on your FLISP or gap housing, and also up to 22,000 uh, as well. It also accommodates a uh, social housing aspect. So those segments, it's it's for that reason that when you listen to the presentation that or input that I made the last part, when we when when a question arose around the management of informal settlement, we. I did indicate that now we are, we are in the process of making sure that we digitize uh, our informal settlement because one of the things that we need to know, we want to clean our database and also be able to check whether Malusi who is staying in, in structure A has received a house before or not. 
whether it's within the province or outside. Because I even spoke of a, a, a term, I said, we can't have people who are doing uh, double dipping. So it's, it's those issues that we are trying to deal with now and going forward. And I think a, pr a presentation, when it's ready, will be able to finish uh, with the to the to the committee in the, in the issues of TRAs, the TRAs that we that we have uh, we have a few TRAs we have a Volvo refer now we have Blackies uh, that we have if you if you if you monitor what the the presentation that was done by Ray it on AXA Symphony Way that is the project because that Blackies with Ray's no I work we are removing those people who are on that side on daily basis the mayor and myself we hand over houses that are in are in Delft and beneficiaries in particular are coming from uh, from Blackies and it's people who have been waiting there for a long time. What is on this particular presentation around AXA Symphony Way, that particular runway will be going or going over that particular area. So it's for that reason that we have, we have we are prioritizing it. So we're doing our level best to make sure that uh, we address that particular issue. But I must say, uh, now on the de-densification program, we have a different model that we'll be using. And I think Ray did touch on it on also on the typologies that he presented uh, this uh, earlier, that now we'll be able to see people not only living in, in the TRA as we would know it before, we'll be using alternative building technology, but an exercise where we are able to house people for, for quite some time in, in in those areas. And I think on the issues that you raised around integration, of uh, Mayor touched on it as well. I also touched on it around Salt River, Pickwick, Woodstock, Pinelands, which is the Condrati project that gives us a yield of more than 3,300 uh, 3, uh, housing opportunities. That particular precinct on its own will have, as the mayor has indicated, it's closer to transport nodes uh, because it will also have uh, a school it, it, it will go have other amenities uh, that are there. In Hout Bay, in Hout Bay, there are also more than 495 housing opportunities. And it's that particular project that the mayor, when when he was responding to, to Honorable Mkalipi, and he was saying he's very concerned because this becomes a consequence on the development that we are doing as a city of Cape Town because it brings some hindrance on our progress. When people invade uh, land parcels that are earmarked for housing development, it derails us and it's something that affects us uh, immensely. Uh, I think if I can go to Umamu um, Tlo, uh, I think the issue of women contractors have responded to it. There's, we don't participate as councillors on a supply chain process, but uh, we do advertise as the city of Cape Town uh, opportunities that exist within the city. It's those business uh, ladies or women who have interest, including youth. In the next two weeks, I'll be launching a program that is specifically focusing on women and youth uh, on, on, on startup businesses. But if people are not taking that opportunity, it's not for us to go to their doorsteps, but what we'll do, we'll make sure that we advertise it across the board so that people can be able to participate uh, those that are waiting. On our waiting list, as I've indicated, because of the number of CRUs, we have got about CR, just over 40,000 CRUs that we have around across the city. We have a, 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 a waiting list that we, on daily basis, try to, to address it. Uh, our office in Paro, uh, under Michael Goodwin, is monitoring that process, making sure that when, when there's a vacancy, we address those and we address people that have been long on our waiting list and they get their, their opportunities. Well, on the issues of uh, the chairperson around the USDG expenditure, Human Settlements Directorate, Chairperson, I can say it without any fear of doubt that we spend not only this year, even in the previous year, uh, as Human Settlements Directorate, we have spent more than 95% of our USDG budget. And I can take you to have also uh, been granted by the National Treasury to do rollovers. Rollovers have been granted by, by National Treasury because, remember, for you to, uh, to have a rollover, you must make a submission to National Treasury. And for them to grant you, they must 
you must be able to demonstrate to them that these particular projects that are underway, these are committed projects, and it's, it, it, it will be accentuated. Uh, we, we don't only deal with uh, newspaper articles, but we deal with facts uh, where we sit to demonstrate uh, our commitment and our delivery to, to, to the vulnerable. Let me uh, start with the Somerset uh, project. I was on that project with the mayor yesterday. I can, uh, I'm sure if uh, some have seen the newspapers today, we handed over those houses uh, in, 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 in Somerset yesterday. That project also is in, in an influ uh, affluent area. It's next to a big mall that has been built. It's also built next to a good estate, which is a uh, developed estate. Those who know it, where a unit on, on, on that particular estate does not go uh, at less than a million rand. We have built right next to it uh, uh, BNG or RTP houses that would benefit. Myself and Mayor were there yesterday. We handed over uh, houses on that. In Morningstar, in Morningstar, that particular matter is under litigation because there are people who felt that they needed to get opportunities and wanted us to remove others uh, for whatever reasons that I don't want to uh, deal, uh, get into detail with. But our, 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 our lawyers are now part of and, uh, getting to a settlement agreement, which might be presented to us as MACO uh, in the next uh, few weeks so that we can find an amicable solution to that particular problem and we'll hand over those houses immediately once that process is concluded that yield of those houses is 166 units they are safeguarded now to make sure that there are no people who are who are, de who are dealing with them mayor has responded to the issue of of pedi and irregular expenditure that relates to morningstar if you look at it uh, it's, it's not irregular expenditure, and I think those who have given the information need to correct it, because that particular matter was an issue of us using Section uh, 33, because the project exceeded uh, uh, a three-year cycle. So the officials, they had to go and seek for deviation because uh, they had, the project was exceeding a three-year cycle. So, but in a, nut, in a nutshell, there was no fruitless expenditure on, on, on that part because those units, as I've said, they are there. Beacon Valley, IY, on IY, those, that particular project, because of the typology in IY, and I so wish the committee can take it upon itself one day so that we can have a side visit on some of the projects that we have uh, tabled today to see the difficulty in that particular area on, on doing your normal uh, PNG unit. Because if, if you were to build, on average, a, UN, a PNG unit, you, you, on average, you pay about 130,000 per unit. But if you were to build on that typology, uh, on, on, on that topology in, in, in IY, it would cost us more than 400,000. But it's those uh, dynamics that we are, we are dealing with and we're trying to find a solution uh, to them. Uh, I think I've attempted uh, to, 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 oh, lastly on Metlao, so uh, we don't have contracts that we set aside for people. I mean, as I've said, uh, supply chain is not for us, but what we do, we encourage youth and women uh, to, to participate on, on, on our, on, on, our con on our contracts, but we don't set aside any project for any person. I think I've, I've, I've dealt with most of them. I don't know if there are follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thanks to the Mayor. If there are any, I don't know if Ray wants to, or Rihanna wants to make an addition. Thanks. I would think Ray and Rihanna would love to make an addition. Can we start with Ray? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to comment on the USDG performance, and Rihanna will then continue with the questions uh, by uh, Honorable Adebe regarding the informal settlements. Uh, in respect of the USDG, we had set on the 14th of June at 82% as the city. The Human Settlements Directorate itself was at 89% on the 14th. And as of this morning, 
uh, human settlements was just over 93% expenditure. Uh, but the target of 90% across the city is for all directorates that are allocated USDG money. Uh, as an example, the transport directorate has already spent by the 14th, 90% of its allocation. Um, uh, spatial planning and environment had spent 95% of its allocation. Um, corporate services had spent 99% of its allocation. But there were some departments like community services and health that were fallen, that had fallen a bit behind and they had until today to process all outstanding invoices. But we will, by Monday morning, have a report of what invoices were pro processed across the city uh, today and over this weekend, which will give us a good indication of the overall performance in terms of expenditure, which the target of the city was to exceed 90%. So, like I said, the human settlements was already at 93% this morning. It may go up a little more uh, from invoices processed this weekend. Uh, okay, uh, once the reconciliations are done and we'd be able to give a more comprehensive report next week on the performance of the city in terms of USDG for the 1920 financial year. Uh, I'll ask Rihanna to comment on the informal settlements. Uh, thank, yeah. you, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ray. Yes, okay. I think um, I don't have uh, eloquent words like uh, the mayor and councillor Boy, so I'm not going to repeat everything that they've said, except maybe the question that was uh, asked about our TRAs. Uh, I've done a quick check on our database, and the, we've got 39 TRAs of various sizes and locations in the city, of which we all know the two, two most prominent ones, the Wolverfeer and Blackishdorp, as Councillor Boy have referred to. On the uh, Drift Sands project, uh, that was also a question about, a uh, Drift Sands project is not just one settlement, it is three settlements being dealt with there, and because of the duration and the complexity of that site, we did realize at the start of the project that we will have to, in terms of the MFMA, follow a Section 33 process. And we have duly started the city Section 33 process. However, when it came to the public comment and public participation component, it was slap bang in the COVID lockdown period. So we had to delay the process in order, it was, I think, during lockdown level five. So we the process was delayed so that we, now that we are lockdown level three, uh, we can proceed um, with supply chain advice how to conclude on that section 33 process on the drift sands project. So as soon as the procurement process or the uh, SME, uh, SCM process concluded, that project will commence because we did foresee it will be longer than a three year a time limit for a normal project. And then on the backyard program, uh, I think the mayor's indicated that we have a backyard program that we're rolling out to various of our informal our backyarders on council and property. And maybe just the conditions of working in these backyarders is very uh, difficult. Uh, we find that it's, there's a density issue in these settlements or in these areas uh, to reach the capacity um, in order to install more services is uh, sometimes uh, very difficult. We actually have to sometimes route the infrastructure along walls and dig up uh, driveways in order to get to it. And then also the social environment. Um, it is very volatile in terms of gangster areas. So uh, our programs are sometimes disrupted by community violence in or gangster violence in these um, some of these areas. Um, I think from informal settlement point, uh, I will end there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I wrote, Chair, I have a follow-up if you are going to allow it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, one. Uh, I has I have one chair too, please. It's it's Hendrix. I was the first one chair. 
Kaza Hadev in that order. Okay. Honorable Hendricks. Yes, I serve with uh, uh, Councillor uh, Boy on the Appeals Committee, and he, he was, has always been an honourable person. But unfortunately, on the issue of Masubaleli, he is misleading this committee, Honourable Chair, with due respect. Uh, we are waiting for the public protector to issue a punitive order against the city of Cape Town with regard to Masubaleli for uh, violating the settlement agreement. We are waiting for the Director of Environmental Enforcement uh, to, after the inspection that they've done, to criminally charge the most senior official uh, in the city of Cape Town uh, for the harm that they are causing uh, in terms of the NEMA Act. The NEMA Act is one of the few acts where you can criminally charge an official. And uh, we've also asked that the city be charged a 10 billion rand fine that, is, uh, the, that the NEMA Act allows for. Uh, not 10 billion, 10 million. Honorable Chair, and also the human rights, we have uh, asked the human rights to give us the monthly reports that they are supposed to get as far as Mr. Lady is concerned. Honorable Chair, we also asked, we alerted you to an SABC program on Mr. Lady last week after the second Cape of Storms. And the first Cape of Storms, uh, the, S the ETV covered the horrible conditions in Mr. Lady. Not one of the people living around the uh, 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 seven canals uh, is being considered for the housing uh, that Councillor uh, Boy referred to. There is a fantastic site that's available uh, to relocate them. You don't need a helicopter to go to Master Pugaleli, Honorable Chair. I can thank you. You just need gumboots. As far as uh, Fedi is concerned, I don't think the mayor and, and Councillor Boy knows about Petty. It's a very secretive project. And uh, you need, a, uh, yes, you do need a helicopter, but it's only an hour trip uh, to, 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 to see what's happening there. Honorable Chair, if you come with your spades, you can build houses there. You don't need anything else. The infrastructure is in, the electricity is in, the sewerage is in, everything is ready to build the 15 houses in Petty. But don't take my word, just go to the, web, to the website, type in PEDI, and you will see the wonderful opportunities that exist in PEDI. Uh, so uh, I, I just hope that uh, I will take up the mayor's offer uh, to assist him if needed, uh, to give you more information about PEDI. It doesn't look as if many of the city officials know about the opportunities for housing, for the people from all over, uh, and also opportunities for manufacturing, for farming, for schools, for hospitals. The plans are, the zoning is done as well on the little chair. They don't know what's happening. But I hope that this committee uh, will look into this matter. Okay. Point to the, the next speaker is Honorable Mkalibu. Thank you very much, Chair. On two points, thanks very much, Mayor. Uh, I will also uh, agree in your, with your invitation. We'll make, we can make arrangements and meet in your office, but you must uh, take into consideration that uh, it's still the peak. So maybe we'll arrange after the COVID-19. I'll come with a delegation of the EFF in, your, in the council so I can see that you are not heartless through the talks that you are going to have. On the issue of Kolani, refusing, on the issue of Kolani, refusing to meet with you, Mayor, I'll check with him. Maybe it will be also wise with, for the Mayor to tell us what exactly want to meet Kolani. It's just that maybe he was so humiliated that day and he is not sure uh, if he's agreeing to meet with you, if it's a correct decision. But we can also uh, liaise uh, outside this meeting for details. Uh, on the issue of the councillors, Mayor, you said that it is not true. Um, when we met here, I think it was 14 of May, Chairperson, if I'm not mistaken, when we met with the uh, city of Cape Town last time. And we raised the uh, same uh, concerns regards to COVID-19 uh, participation of other councillors. 
And I must also put on record that your MMC on health, uh, the young man that is your MMC on health, made undertaking that is, is going to correct the situation. Before we even closed the meeting, there was a positive answer uh, from our councillors. Uh, they phoned him. He agreed. He also corrected that. So I think we must also sing uh, a chairperson whereby we have to go We must not always sit, uh, we must be negative all the time. So we raised concern with him and he made undertaking that is going to correct it. And he didn't take time to correct it. So our councillors confirmed that indeed uh, that young man who is an MMC of health invited them. So therefore, a, a, a mayor, please also direct us uh, about this concern that I'm raising with you here to say that uh, where does the councillors must also conduct uh, in terms of uh, raising those concerns of basic services that is not attending to, attended to? Because you said, no, it's not true. You are attending to those uh, issues of savings, uh, basic service delivery. So I can communicate with them to say the mayor said, no, uh, he has an open door police. Contact this number or your PA or I don't know uh, in terms of this concern. The last point, Chair, that I want to make is for um, MMC Malusi Boy. Uh, no, maybe you didn't hear me correctly. I was not saying that you must take any person, any friend of yours from the street and uh, take him to be doing the PHP. I was referring to those experienced women uh, who are also have engaged with the National Department a long time ago. I even remember that some of your councillors from DA municipality uh, city of Cape Town around 2006 and 2007, they went to a, an, an exchange program with that uh, NGO, of which there was an MOU between South Africa and India, because this uh, PHP started, initiated by the India. So it's a very, very, very old project of social uh, development, but in the form of PHP. So you are saying that uh, the, uh, some, some of them, they also have a substandard uh, 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 outcome. These ones, they engage with you, they sit down with the council, you provide them with technical team because they don't have necessary skills to make sure that after they have uh, built their house, it's going to be a very, on a very high standard house. But what is happening, you, you, you provide them with those necessary skills until they save on the top structure. Instead of one room, they produce four rooms, very beautiful four rooms, even more than four rooms. So some of their projects are in Deben, and some of your councillors, if you can go back to your records of 2006, 2007, it will reflect that some of your councillors who are serving on your committee in the city of Cape Town went to a travel exchange in Deben and saw those houses. No, I'm not taking, I'm not talking about fly by night people. So I think I must clarify that one, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Mukalipi. Honorable Opperman. Honorable Opperman. It might have been cut again. I'll come back to where she's like, Honorable Mpumsa. Uh, Honorable uh, Hadebe. No, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chaperson. Um, I, I wanted to, 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 to do this earlier on, but I realized that um, uh, Alderman Zentia Limbeck, uh, uh, she's not around. But let me, uh, uh, Alderman uh, Dan Plato, please convey my sincere gratitude to Alderman Zentia Limbeck. Uh, this week, indeed, when the ward councillor of Ward 96 in Kailicha called me up the invasion of land where it's going to benefit 1,125 people, uh, it was deliberately invaded by four people who have their own structures. Uh, he called me, I subsequently informed uh, uh, the, the alderman uh, uh, Limbeck and she swiftly moved 
and inform the relevant authorities and those people who are dealt with accordingly. We want to stay here without any fear of contradiction. That land invasion is not going to be tolerated, especially when it's done deliberately. There, we are not uh, confused without any fear of contradiction. We stand by the issue of condemning land invasion. Moving right along, Honorable Chair, Alderman Dan Plato, to us, integration means the working class and the poor that travel from day to day from Kailicha, Nyanga, Kukule to, to Sea Point to work and come back late in the evening are integrated and are being housed in Sea Point. There's an area called Tafalsech, the land that is vacant. The city, together with the province, are refusing to convert that area into affordable housing. So when you talk about integration to us, it is practically those issues of Tafalsech, where the school uh, is no longer uh, uh, in use, but the land has been earmarked by the domestic workers of that site to be used for affordable housing. Secondly, uh, the Somerset Hospital in VNA Waterfront, uh, Helen Bowden, where I'm sure you are aware that there, were, there are people who are occupying uh, 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 that building. If you convert that building into affordable, decent housing, we know that it belongs to the province, which is led by the DA. It's been more than three years we've been uh, writing and appealing that integrate, walk the talk, and, and, and show the residents and citizens of Cape Town that you are serious when you talk about integration. Integration is not taking people to Blackish Dog and, and whether they're Africans and color to say, okay, here you are together, now you are integrated. No. Our poor working class must not travel every day to work. They must walk from their house to the working uh, 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 environment. The other issue that I'd like to get clarity on, uh, that since 2016 uh, to February this year, the city has reported 96,078 housing backlog. What is the city doing about uh, this number of backlog in terms of housing. The, and I want to also get a clarity in terms of uh, the Woodstock and Salt River present. Are you saying the project is underway? According to the information at my disposal is that this project is on hold. It is before the impact. I would like to get an understanding because that's one of the project uh, 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 that will deal with the issue of uh, uh, integration. Is this project underway or it's on hold and it's in front of MPEG? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, it is... Uh, necessary that we, 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 we clarify some 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 uh, clear positions here in terms of uh, what what is needed first first and foremost uh, the question of land expropriation without compensation chair uh, in South Africa speaks directly to the history of dispossession of land in South Africa and the disparities that uh, our people have encountered and the wars of dispossession that they've uh, gone through in terms of uh, uh, the beginning with the Khoisan, uh, uh, where they they were uh, uh, massacred and uh, and the genocide that followed. So it is a very very serious issue. At times, it's very very emotive. And as South Africa, we 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 uh, the, of course the the constitution as it is. Does, does does allow that we have different views on this issue. But it is a sellout position to, to then say that uh, given the history of, of South Africa, 
uh, where land is, 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 is possessed by a few in society uh, uh, who are opulent and to a larger extent who are the same uh, at a certain color uh, uh, requires us to look at the justice project which is uh, uh, proposed by the emancipation movements in terms of uh, uh, addressing the, the, the imbalances of the past. Now, we can't speak in, in, in two uh, uh, fronts. Uh, uh, at the back of our, uh, uh, at, at, the, at the back we, of our heads, we speak about uh, land expropriation, and then on, at, the, in, 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 at face value, we, we speak about, uh, 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 we promote uh, private, private property. Uh, that 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 is really uh, uh, undesirable at this moment because, uh, uh, as I have said before in 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 the last committee chair, it is a serious matter that should be uh, because it's standing on its head as it is. So we need to 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 gather together and face reality that really at some point, even if it's not us, uh, our children are, are going to hold us accountable on these issues. And ask us why did we why were we quiet and selling out on these issues? So we need to 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 really uh, 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 face up. Uh, having said that, uh, I have follow up questions. And 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 lastly, chair, on that issue, the reason why we are we are proposing the custodianship model is because that the the state should be the custodianship to be the custodian of the land to distribute the land equally, so that people who who have money do not use their money to actually. Uh, continue in the same way that uh, Honorable Mkalipi has, has, has alluded to, that uh, most of the time the money is used to go to courts. And then when you go to court, you are still using the, the, the public money, whereas uh, you are using it against the people themselves, who are the, the, the owners of that public money, uh, who uh, uh, have a history of, of dispossession and as such could not, could not even afford to, to to, to, to access to, to those legal uh, uh, representations and, and 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 we must be honest uh, about 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 the, the the history of the country and and where we are now and where do we want to go and not and not speak in in tongues when it comes to these issues uh, um, um, uh, for, 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 for 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 but but speak for for people but I have follow up questions chair uh, on, on 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 MMC Malusi boy uh, in terms of how many um, buildings, state buildings, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the city, the buildings that are, are, are owned by the city that are not used, how many unused buildings that belong to the city? Because, Chair, that could be a, 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 a icebreaker there. We, we, could, we could now speak about a, a, a spatial integra integration and finding solutions in, in terms of bringing workers closer to, 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 the, to the working areas uh, by inculcating them into the city where uh, those, uh, those, those, those buildings, the, the buildings that are not used, so that the city then uh, 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 also resolves uh, the, 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 the question of, of, of incapacity and... and uh, and uh, and the ability to provide houses, uh, Mayor, to 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 its uh, residents. Number two, Chair, and lastly, uh, in terms of what I I have been heard, Mayor, uh, uh, speaking about disabled people uh, building uh, 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 now the the the, the 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 quality houses. That would meet the standards required to ensure of, to, sh to, to ensure of access to people with disabilities. So, 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 where, what is your plan there in terms of providing? Because uh, 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 we, I, I think, chair, we should also uh, calculate how many within that that the, those settlements that we seek to develop, mayor, uh, calculate how many people are, are disabled now. Uh, um, in that, in in those areas, because it's vitally important. Those are people that 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 are vulnerable in our in our in our in our spaces in in our municipalities. So we need to take care 
especially when we build infrastructure, especially when we are dealing, we really need to take good care of the disabled. And whenever you, you, you come to the committee, please uh, provide with that with that information in terms of the disabled uh, how do you inculcate them in the system in the projects of of developing houses coupled with uh, 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 structures infrastructure development now uh, where are the libraries going to be and so forth thank you very much chair thank you can i check honorable Opperman? honorable Opperman. Can I check Honorable Kaiser? Leadership, you. Leadership. Sorry, my apologies. I wanted to say Honorable Mpumza. Sorry, my apologies. You've just finished talking. Honorable Mpumza, did we lose you for good? Yes, then, under the circumstances, then I should think, uh, Executive Mayor, uh, I don't think you should cast as position that uh, we are being fed with the wrong information. You'll recall we are all members of parliament and we are there in Cape Town most of the time. I, in particular, from November last year up to March before the lockdown, I was doing work for my organization. So I had an opportunity to experience Cape Town than knowing the city. And then the only area I couldn't go maybe because of the helicopter issue is the Betty area. But the rest, <laughs> and I should think Executive Mayor, you must take me there. Then there's an area that I visited that struck me, Executive Mayor, while I was there. The one in Plateau Clough. It's a nice place. I've seen that. And the uh, Upon my own research, I've seen that a site there, uh, the cheapest affordable unit is 2.5 million. Uh, the, the other bigger units that I've seen is almost uh, 4 million. And then uh, it's a private developer who's doing that. The city has sold the land to the private developer. And then the reality, even myself, I cannot afford 4 million. Uh, to buy a site if I want to, to stay in that unit. But the working class can't afford that. That's the issue that one wanted to raise. The issue about the for sure development, you're saying it's underway. Uh, as it's just a PT Mukalipi said because of the COVID-related things. We'll then ask Honorable Hadebe to go and verify that for us, because according to what we're saying, the the, the, the project is also a, a halted. Most of the things are public knowledge executive name. There's nobody who will tell us what to do here. And I'm saying that the majority of us will hear on the issue of Mas Kumelele. Honorable uh, Kaiser is it, and you hear what Honorable uh, uh, Hendrix has said on this one to say we are differing when we come to matters of this nature. So basically what we're trying to raise with you, Honorable Executive Mayor, like we say, we are not fault finders here, as you heard me saying that, but also at the same time by virtue of us being um, public representatives, ours we want like you said, it's your commitment to do away with the historical uh, special planning. That's why you volunteer to come and give this. So our input, you must take it in good faith to see where there's areas where you feel, we see you are lacking. We believe there's a room for improvement and we want to appreciate your, your commitment. Honorable Councillor Boy, we, we accept your invitation to visit all those uh, projects. I should think then should this uh, pandemic slow down a bit, we will come and see those uh, a, a project as per your invitation. Anyway, over to you, Executive Mayor. And that was the last batch of questions. Also looking at the time, uh, you must try to respond to the questions as raised so that we can conclude this meeting. Yeah, thank you, Honourable Chair. Uh, can I firstly, I will summarise, and can I firstly give to Councillor Boy 
to give a last couple of input. Thanks, 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 Maya. I, I, I just want to touch on a few issues. I know it's, it's, uh, it won't take more than a minute. I mean, I, firstly, I must appreciate what Councillor Hadem and I think myself and Mayor will convey the message to Councillor Limbeck about, about him asking us to remove people who are living that outside. We will take that message to Alderman Limbeck. Also, on the issue of Helen Bowden, I think I'll link it to the Woodstock site. Those those two sites, uh, I'll, I don't want to divide much, but I can simply say, particularly on Woodstock, we have in our engineers on site now who are doing assessment because that particular precinct is, is earmarked for social health. So we are in, we're on path down, uh, we're moving very well there, including salt reef. I did touch on it when I, when I, when I, when I responded. Can, uh, Honorable Alipi, I, I, I think I want to say I agree with you. I was not merely saying we pick up people from the state. All I was saying on the program that we're going to do now going forward as a city, you as I was saying we'll be launching it in the next week or two. We'll be having people like we'll be having institutions like CR, uh, CIGB on board, we're having NHBRC on board who will be able to guide and assist such in initiatives so that they can go, they can grow and become better and good uh, uh, entities. So we are doing our level best to make sure that we assist those uh, those individuals. I won't respond to issues of uh, expropriation without compensation. I think it's a conversation that does not belong here now. Uh, uh, but what I want to say to Honorable Reza, I think what you wanted also to deal with when you were asking us about building not being utilized, and one of the buildings that are not uh, underutilized is, is the Woodstock uh, Hospital, which was which did not belong to us as, as Honorable Adebed indicated. It belonged to provincial government, and we purchased a particular pro, uh, site. So we don't have any other site that is idling there. That's why we are making an appeal. And if you had listened to uh, Raguba, which is who is our director for housing, he made mention that if the committee can also raise a voice with public works because public works is the entity that has buildings that are standing under utilize the city that we can utilize for social housing we would be very excited to do that and we've written to them and as the mayor has indicated he also wrote to the president on in a number of instances and vast of land that is uh, around the city the city has uh, not, much not much land uh, that is uh, available to it. People that have last na- uh, land, it's national government, it's national government through public works and SOPs who have vast pieces, pieces of land, of land available to them. So, so we appreciate as well if you can assist us in that regard. So, so I think, I think the issue of uh, disabilities that was raised by Honorable uh, uh, I must, I must also, also reiterate, when we, when we speak, when we say vulnerable groups, vulnerable groups are your, 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 your disabled are your dependent households, which homes uh, people have, uh, both parents have passed on, so take take into the direction of those, so we prioritize those, uh, those things. Yes. Mr. Laboy, I want to check with the colleagues whether it's only me whom I hearing the echo. Is it only me or you, the others of you you are experiencing this? Yes. So, yes. Sorry, Chair. Yes. Sorry, Same. Chair. Yes. No, no, What's sorry, Chair. I think... No, no, no. I think it's because the mayor's mic was not muted. Sorry, we apologize about yes. that. Now, because we are sitting now, together now in the same board. Yes. Oh, I yes. see. Now it makes sense. Okay. Yes. Proceed. So I was saying to to honourable Teresa that uh, we, when we speak of vulnerable groups, we speak about your disabled, your old people, people that are sixty years and above, and also child-headed households of people who have uh, whose parents or kids whose parents have passed on. We prioritize those people when we are dealing with our list or people who are going to our houses. So that remains our uh, priority. I think I've uh, spoken about the building not occupied. We're dealing with Woodstock, which was not occupied. We have engineers on site. I've, I've, I've touched on that. Salt River, uh, 
the social housing partner is on site. So they are just waiting to do construction on, on, on that particular site. The issue of integration, I think Mayor touched on it a number of times. Uh, we do this, all these projects that are particularly are involving social housing. They are in the inner city and they, are, they form part of integration. Lastly, if you didn't hear me, I said on construction, of women construction that Honorable Mkalipi raised. We said we're launching a program now in the city of Cape Town where CIDB, NHBRC, which are key stakeholders in the built environment, will be participating with us to able to be able to develop your smaller youth and women uh, entities. So on, yeah, that that is it. I think I can hand over to Mayor now to sum up. Thank you so much. Honorable Chair. Person, thank you very much. I will be very brief. Um, just on the last pieces of input from my side is um, Honourable Hendricks. I would love to engage my friend on on his Masipumalele issues. Um, I'm not going to say much. I don't want to waste the, the panel's uh, time. And also maybe we can, I take him up on his offer for a discussion on Perry. The issue, Honorable Khadebe, um, look, I've said enough about land invasions. I think I just need to say a last thing about Somerset Hospital and uh, Woodstock. The moment this, uh, it, may, it is made known that we want to transform those hospitals into housing units, there was invasions. And currently, it's a lengthy drag out legal process because of people, to get people out, that is jumping the housing queue. Uh, that's what's happening there. And uh, if we are not going to stop that, uh, I don't know what else will help because the people, the law abiding people on the waiting list will say, what, what then are their names doing on a waiting list if this is happening? If we just going to grace them the rights to stay on land and to stay where they are and that sort of thing. Um, and I think uh, the issue, I, I maybe, and I am not going to mention names, and I think we're on par with our colleagues in council. Um, councillors from all the other opposition parties in council, Honourable Chair, and I want you in your capacity as Chair to hear this. I have mails, emails, WhatsApp messages from opposition uh, across the board complaining about land invasions, although they don't want to make their voices heard publicly. Publicly, they give the impression they uh, support the invaders, but they know if that land is invaded, the land is lost for development. And Honorable Chairperson, that is my gripe. That is unfortunately my problem. And that is why I wrote to the Honorable President to say we must discuss this issue because the law-abiding people is of the opinion. Um, it doesn't help to be law-abiding because uh, invaders just get... Uh, we need to address these issues. But uh, leave that. Uh, Honorable Kalipi, um, thank you so much for the fact that you accept my offer to have a cup of tea with me, we will leave the chairperson out of that. <laughs> we will leave the chairperson out of the cup of tea. But I think uh, uh, the Honourable Chair will agree with me, we must build the necessary relationships and we must understand one another. Um, but uh, I also want to say to you the issue with regard to the basic services not attended to, Please get my cell number from Honourable Chairperson. The Honourable Chair, very good in contacting my office through her office. And uh, please do that. Get your cell number from Honourable Mkaliti. <laughs> yeah, you must, please, Chairperson, please. But I also must say that um, this week, um, the EFF members and ANC councillors were in my office to come and fetch their food parcels for their people. So we treat all councillors the same. And uh, uh, it, it helped with a working relationship in the city. Councillor Geza, I, I, I hear what you are saying. I appreciate your, your input. And, uh, and uh, then I think the reason, Chair, and maybe that is a topic also we can talk about, um, the issue with regard to from time to time, if we give a development to a bigger developer, 
we also need to make money. Government also need to get income. Government cannot just want to give. Uh, so what we are doing with certain portions of development to allow that is to say to that developer, now we, we ask you to pay the highest notch of rates to the city. Because we use that higher knots of rates to cross-subsidize our infrastructure, our developmental programs and that. But that is a discussion, Council Geza, we, 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 we can have. On the other issues, um, the unused buildings and et cetera, et cetera, um, uh, we, can, we can address that as we go along. To the Honorable Chairperson, look, the, the foreshore issue, uh, it is the development is not... The practical development have not started. It is the planning processes. What I mean by that, Honorable Chair, the planning of that is underway. And then we still need to have a public participation process where the public can give the necessary input as well. And with Plattekloof, the developer appointed is a non-white developer and uh, built in uh, is is definitely is a portion of affordable housing and that sort of thing as well. And we're going to watch that development very, very, very closely. I want to say to you, Honorable Chair, on this note, um, thank you very much for inviting us again. We really, the city appreciate it. Um, I, I I was just trying to, to unleash with regard to how the city of Captain understand issues. And the corrective messages from your side, we appreciate that. And to thank you very much that you also have an open door to listen to the input of the city of Cape Town. And uh, um, if you want us in future to come back again, um, we will definitely accept. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the beautiful input from all the members of the committee. Thank you. I, I'm glad you take it in that spirit, constructive discussions for the betterment of the lives of our people. Uh, we, we are still going to uh, engage. It's an ongoing process. At the same time, we'll be addressing our people uh, 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 needs together in a way also to support the city so that it becomes a, bit, a city to live in that belongs to all who live in it. So we sincerely appreciate your coming, Executive Mayor, and the the extension, the invitation that you are extending that on future matters we can still continue to engage. In so doing, we we, we appreciate the mere fact that you you are not running away from being held accountable as well, which is a very good indicator. Colleagues, I should think we can excuse the colleagues from the city so that we can then continue with our further business of the day. Executive Mayor and team, I think we'd love to excuse you. Thank you. I want to thank you and appreciate your coming. we we'll still continue to engage. Remember, there's a commitment that once you finish the investigations, you're going to come back to us. We'll await that feedback. You tell us when the report is ready so that we can continue to engage on those matters. Uh, I want to thank you. The thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, you are excused with the team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, I'm still wanting to check the quorum because we need to adopt a, our committee report. Quickly, I should think you might have read the report. I see um, in our midst, Honorable Oberman, Honorable Kanif Hendricks, Honorable Megiddo, Honorable Inkosi Lutuli have been so quiet today in the West. I don't know why. Honorable Mkalipi. Honorable Brink, Honorable Direko, Honorable Geza, Honorable Hadewe, and Honorable Priti Kawa. So we do form a quorum. 
I can you assist us apart from the committee report which other documents must we adopt tonight? Chairperson, for tonight we can only uh, these minutes and other petition reports, but for tonight the, the the special adjustment report is actually the most important because we want to ATC yes. in tonight ATC still so that it's available for other members for the debate on Wednesday morning. Yes. So the issue is that then on Wednesday we have a debate that is scheduled. For us, if the colleagues have seen the list of the budget votes, ours is on Wednesday, the 22nd, from 10 to 11.45. So we are doing it together with the, yes, that's our budget vote. So we need to get the report 80 seats. And then there are issues in relation to the CRL and the demarcation, those those reports were sent, referred back to us late. When were they referred back to us late, uh, Shirin? When was the date again? Remind me. They were sent, it, it was only the MDB that tabled a report. I think oh, it was on Monday, but it's only the MDB. So the, the they tabled their report after we have considered uh, the adjusted ones for the depart two departments. So it was late. We could have coupled, uh, do it the same with them. When you receive it. Sorry, Chairperson. When did you receive the report that was tabled later by the MDB? The report was tabled. It was on Monday, I think. This Monday, and we yeah. already considered the two departments' reports, unfortunately. So you will advise us on the way forward, how do we then schedule it? And then I really, I, I'm in a catch 22 situation because if we're going to deal, if we have when they, how do you think we can deal with the MDB one? Here. Chairperson, I spoke to um, a colleague of mine on appropriations. They say, um, for for now, the department adjustments, they are the most important that we report on those. Mm. And in the department's adjustments, it will show the, the transfers or the decreases from the from the entities. Okay, find them. I wanted that clarity. The committee also would have loved to deal with that. Then, uh, are you able to zoom the report? I believe the colleagues had an opportunity to go through the report. Colleagues, we are on page one of the report. Any issue, corrections, additions that colleagues want to raise when it comes to this? In fact, is the introduction. So it can be the ticks and the dots that we want to deal with. Uh, item number two, synopsis of the special adjustments. Uh, these are the matters that we dealt with in your briefing notes towards the, 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 the consideration of the adjusted budgets. There's nothing new. It's also coming from the Treasury uh, documents. Then I think let's go to item number three, committee observations. Uh, 3.1, it's still as it is, the deputy minister. I hope you've seen it. 
and we still keep it as it is. Then 3.2 traditional affairs, you can see we've dealt with it. We had ample time up to 3.6. And then 3.7, the issue of the water crisis in Msinga. That's a matter that is still here. And then when we meet next week, we want to progress on that one. And from 3.6, then uh, for the department is 3.8. The program head has committed that is going to give us a report towards by the end of the month, beginning of next month. And you can see 3.11 and 3.12. Our recommendations in relation to the department on 4.1. Proceed, Chair. 4 4.2 4.3 4.4 4.5 4.6 4.7 Then can I have a mover in the second Colleagues, can I have a mover? Mkalib, you want to move? You are the two of you, are you competing for the space, you and Mkalib? Who, who wants to speak? Chair, I'd like, I'd like okay. to move for the adoption as the true reflection of issues raised, resolved, and agreed upon. Thank you. Can I have any second motion for the adoption of the report? It's moved by Honorable Beki Hadeg. Sure. I second it. Uh, Nawezi Tabilu Tuli has seconded the adoption of the report. Then the report is agreed to. Talk. So, colleagues, you can go now and start to prepare for the debates. Chair, can you yeah. register the rejection of the EFF? Rejection of the EFF. Objection of the EFF of the report. Noted. Honorable Brink. Chair, um, as is customary, we're happy to let uh, the report go through uh, to the to the National Assembly. Mm. Okay. You want to explain why you are rejecting the report, Mkalipi? No, Chair. We'll see you at the debate. Kalipi? Okay, colleagues, that, um, <laughs> that is it. Why are you She is paralyzed. <laughs> Leave me, Kalipi. She's paralyzed. <laughs> Who's paralyzed? <laughs> No, we'll say it on the declaration when we do the declaration on Tuesday, oh. on Wednesday. 
Full of surprises. Yeah, we'll talk there. No, no, no. No surprises, Chair. I mean, it's a political position. I understand. No. We're not sell out. Not sell out. No, I know. I understand. That's why. <laughs> no, otherwise, the report is adopted yeah. and we'll await for that debate. We are looking forward to that, Honorable Kalik. Yeah, has a success. Yeah. also smiling on this matter. It's okay. <laughs> let us <laughs> join our meeting. Let us join our meeting. Good night. Enjoy your weekend. See you on Tuesday, colleagues. Yeah. Good night. Good night. She will recover. Can you recover me? Don't worry. Becky, you just tell us now. <laughs> Becky. Yes. Becky, who's the sellout? Is it you or Mkali? Mkali, you see Exactly. Exactly my point. She's paralyzed. Ah, <laughs> who's paralyzed? You go behind our back, you write letters. When you go behind our back, you write letters. I really report your lolo. Honorable Mkalipi with H. What are your reasons? Dololo, you are paralyzed. See you on Wednesday. We'll be ready with our reasons. Let's give her space to fundraise the reasons. Good night, colleagues. I know she does not have reasons, but she's going to fundraise the reasons over the weekend. Let's give her space. Let's ask her to fundraise. Shut up, Wena. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> nice, Nike. Nice. 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 Nice.